Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? How's everyone doing today? It's Friday. Then Saturday, then Sunday, then back to work. But right now it's Friday. How's everyone doing today? There go. Get that all cleaned up. I'm trying to keep my desk clean. It, it. Baby steps. But we're getting there. And actually, do I got to play with the light? Ah, eh, the light's better. I, I got fed up with the fact that because I wear hats now, which today's Tripod Garage, another good channel. Go check it out. Uh, if you want me to wear your hat, send me your hat. I'll wear your hat. Um, but because I wear hats now, I find my face really dark. So I went and picked up some good old cheapo Amazon newer lights. So if you see the light levels changing midstream, it's because I'm fiddling with the light. I think that's good. I don't like being in the darkness. I'm already in the basement. I don't want to be in the darkness in the basement. Ah. How's everyone doing today? How is everyone doing today? Today we got a, a simple stream. Nothing too fancy. Um, we've got a new hot end to install. It's print and chill Friday, but we got to do a little bit of work before we get to the printing and the chilling. Um, so today, something new, something new, something new. We have the Drop Effect XG. Uh, let me pull it up here, pull the website up. So this hot end is from Drop Effect, uh, which is now like a bought by Fetus or merged with Fetus, or they're like a cooperative agreement type thing. Um, but Drop Effect, who's existed for a while, is now working with Fetus. Um, and this is their new hot end, the XG. Um, it is a, a single, I don't know how we're gonna call, how are we gonna call these? We need, we need to figure out a name for these all-in-one hot ends that are like, other than the nozzle, pretty much it's a single unit. Cause this is akin to the Revo where you got the thermistor and the heater are part of the heater block and it's one unit. Although I believe you could change out the thermistor in here. Cause I believe the thermistor, um, the thermistor does have a separate, oops, how's this gonna work? There we go, oh, nope, nope, there we go. Thermistor has got its own little input there. So I believe we could change out the thermistor if we really wanted to, but the heater is built into it. Um, and then we got a nozzle, which I'll touch on the nozzle in a bit because it's not a standard nozzle. So um, it is a rigid mount, okay? Um, now it's also a kinematic mount. So I'm assuming this is how they're bypassing the slice patent on rigid mount heater blocks and unsupported heat breaks because it's not rigid, it's kinematic. It, it floats, but it doesn't, I don't know. I'm not a scientist, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but I haven't seen anyone bring up anything counter to this, so I'm assuming it's good, because it's a different cell. But, here's the thing I like, okay? I love me rigid mount, okay? I, I know some of the, some of the uh, old guard, they like their groove mount, but I love me rigid mount. And when it comes to rigid mounts, um, you have all the options on this thing. So you got top mount, like how we do it on the, the Revo Voron and a, a few other hot ends. You got side mounts if you want to go sideways. You got your through hole mounts for your Creality's. Um, and I think you even got mounts from the front. Those, yeah, these two are tapped holes. So there is many a way you could mount this. Um, copper uh, heat sink. Um, Assuming it's a stainless steel heat break. Uh, but there are a lot of holes in this, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. So you got your Creality mount. It comes with adapters, too. It does have adapters. Gary, gifted one community membership. Cheers. Thank you, Gary. Uh, so we have Voron sale. I guess they're renaming this because I don't think... Let me find a Revo. Yeah, Revo. I don't know if the whole pattern is the same. Yeah, the whole pattern is not the same. So, I don't know if it's the same as the dragon, but they're, they're when they say uh, Voron style, I, I guess somebody already brought this up to them and they're changing it, or at least they said they would. It's uh, It just means a top-down mount. So, it, it's, you got holes on the top and you mount it like a, a Revo Voron. So... So, different mounts, um, a whole bunch of different ways to mount it. Yeah, so you can swap out the thermistor. Um, it does come with a little fan, which we're not going to use today because we are putting this in a stealth burner. So I, I took the uh, fan off. 
don't ask me when the mount's coming out. I don't know. I didn't design it. It's in testing. Um, and the nozzle. Okay. So you can upgrade to a PT100 or a PT1000 sensor. Nozzle. It's M4. So the nozzles are not the traditional V6 nozzle. They're not the, the six millimeter nozzle. Um, so if you want to use a V6 nozzle, you, you cannot. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Proprietary nozzles, which it kind of is what it is. A lot of people are moving toward that. Revo's got proprietary. Um, it just kind of seems to be a thing people are moving towards. Now, the advantage of a thinner nozzle, though, is there's less material between your heater and your filament because you got to transfer material. You got to transfer the heat through the heater block, through the wall of the the nozzle, into the filament. So if you have a thinner nozzle, then the heat theoretically transfers into the filament quicker or more efficiently. I guess. Um, I am I am not a scientist. Um, but it is what it is. Now, I don't know what kind of nozzle it came with. I'm assuming it's just a, a plated nozzle, a copper plated nozzle. Um, but it copper nickel plating nozzle. There you go. So it's a copper nickel plating nozzle. Um, titanium. Uh, kinematic mount, I guess it is. There's your titanium heat break. So it is titanium. It's actually not stainless steel. So copper, aluminum, titanium, copper nickel plating. So it looks pretty good. Like this is the first time we're playing with it. So we're just kind of going through the spec sheet. Uh, kinematic mount. So I'm assuming this is how it gets by the patent issue with slice. So you get rigid, but it's no not rigid. It per just prevents it from rotating. I Someone can clarify that, that'd be cool. And there you go. So apparently it heats up really quick. It's got a really good temperature gradient. Um, here are some charts for you, for those that care. Problem is, it doesn't give you time, so you can't really... You, you need something on the other axis here to really see it. But there we go. So that's uh, the drop effect. Um, XG hot end, which stands for extreme gradient. Have I thought about adding some third-party emotes? What do you mean third-party emotes? I have some emotes. So yeah, so that is it. I'm going to... See, where is my little thingy? Where is my thingy? Do I have my thingy to torque this on properly? There it is. So, yeah, so it does use a smaller nozzle, so it's not the seven mil. You need the, um, ah, I got one. Is that, nope. I don't have a wrench. <laughs> Let me see if the goodie bag that came with it came with a wrench. Uh, did it come with a wrench? So. I'll be, uh, full disclosure, I don't have, um, like, a production, what you would get if you buy one. I have their, like, uh, pre-production baggie of stuff. And then I also have, um, ooh, uh, their little pamphlet. So, it is rated up to 300C. Um, all filaments, obviously non-abrasive filaments. And I'm assuming you'll be able to buy different, uh, different nozzles down the line. And then Fetus, being Fetus, sent me a bunch of stickers, which I will say I do love Fetus's mascot. Like, I do love the mascot. I'm, I'm not going to complain about the mascot. And then, so, yeah. So, let me see what's in the goodie box. Ah, there's an Allen key. Okay, so we got some uh, extension cables, which we're going to have to make our own because we're mounting this in a Voron. Can't see channel emojis. You just click the little smiley face. There you go. Gotta go fast. Music? Yeah, I'll get the music going. There we go. Loose since wave today. So it does come, I do have a groove mount adapter. I do have a Orbiter V2 adapter. So if you want to mount an Orbiter V2 directly to this, you can. Um, and with the whole pattern being pretty open, you could probably design any mount for this relatively easy. I know uh, uh, the person who did the uh, the quick whip up of doing a mount for the stealth burner didn't take too long. So. So there we go. So let's just tighten this nozzle up. There we go. Put the little sock. It does come with a sock. So yeah, so we're not going to run abrasives through this. 
Uh, the plan is we're just going to get it mounted. We'll do a little test print. And then uh, I need to start printing some TPU. So we'll, we'll run some TPU through it, see how it goes. So what are we putting this in? Big Papa Joey P. Why is it called Big Papa Joey P? Because it's a big trident and it's printed out of Prusament. So it's Big Papa Joey P. So take that out. Where is filament? Speaking of filament, do you need filament? Because every stream we give away a spool of filament from Polymaker. Link in the description. So you might as well enter for your chance to win a free spool of filament. Also, if you want to buy some filament because you need more than one spool or you need, you know, you just need to stock up. Uh, there's links in the description as well. Affiliate links, they go a long way in helping support the channel. They don't cost you anything extra. Hey, Jose. So let me check out chat. I haven't actually checked chat much. Uh, thinner mass. Yeah, so the, the nozzle being proprietary, yes, you know, it. it is what it is. But thinner walls equal better heat transfer because there's less material for the heat to work its way through. In theory, I am not an engineer. Um, let's see here. Printer is three. No, this is 350 by 350 by 250, actually. This is not a LDO kit, for those wondering. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. There we go. Okay. So right now, this has an afterburner in it um and a clockwork one we're gonna put a stealth burner front face on it but we're gonna leave the clockwork one in it for now i'll upgrade it at some point um i actually meant to upgrade it earlier i just honestly forgot <laughs> because i haven't used this much in a bit uh, i used it a lot for when i was printing the mando armor and then i just kind of stopped do i have extruder cw2 i do not i do not i probably should uh, but I do not. Better for flexibles. Um, I'm printing TP... What is it? T, T95? TPU95? Let me grab it here. Uh, TPU95, which isn't as flexy. And I've printed uh, TPU95 type uh, flexibles on a CW1 before in the past without issues. So, Yep, membership gifting works now. So... Funny story. Let's detour. Okay, detour. So, for those that don't know, on last Saturday, last Friday stream and last Saturday stream, if you gifted a membership, it got refunded. YouTube it just decided we're just going to refund all. It wasn't just me. A few others apparently had this issue. So, not only did YouTube, you know, I, I lose all revenue from gifted memberships for those two streams because they all got refunded from an issue on their end that when you talk to their chat, they're like, this is how memberships work. I'm like, hello, YouTube person. Yes, I know how memberships work. When person purchases membership, people click yes, they get the membership. Yeah, so sometimes if they don't suck yes, they don't get the membership. I'm like, yes. However, for every stream before, they are gifted pretty much instantaneously. Yeah, sure, there might be the odd one. However, when 20 plus people buy gifted memberships and then not a single one is awarded, don't you think something is wrong? Well, this is how they work. So it's broken on your end because it's working wrong. Well, it's working now. Have a nice day. By the way, you, you charged me like I, I'm out six cents. Literally, I, for my gifted membership results for those two streams, I owe YouTube six cents and eight cents. So not only did they um, break and I lost revenue on two streams, they actually uh, charged me. So I, I owe 14 cents to Google apparently because their system broke. And then I'm out, you know, however much my revenue is. So I sent them a nice little email explaining everything and saying, how are you going to compensate me for my lost revenue? And I'm waiting to see what they say. <laughs> oh, people are gifted memberships. DFH gifted five memberships. Cheers. Zombie Hedgehog gifted five. Cheers. And Por Robert Porter. I almost said Porter Robert. Uh, gifted five memberships. Cheers. 14 cents. I know, but it's more the, the principle of it. It's like your system broke. So I lost income and then you charged me 14 cents. And then of course you couldn't even tell me something was broken. All you could do was like, well, this is how our system works. I'm like, I know how it works. It's been working just fine until the past two streams and then they broke. So obviously you broke. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm gonna reuse this fan here. So let me get a marker. I need to get more markers. I used to have a white marker. But I don't have it anymore. 
Okay, so. This fan. Oh, no, that's on. It's already marked. We're good. And Johnny St. Pierre, thank you for coming, member. Hey, Johnny, how you doing, man? Over to the club. Okay, go to that. So that. So again, this is the old afterburner tool head. We're upgrading to the stealth burner and the hot end. So for those wondering, uh, this machine currently has a Proto Print Raptor. Um, the reason we're swapping it out has nothing to do with the Proto Print. I've had no issues with it. Um, it's just those two machines are testing obsidians right now. That machine has a mosquito in it for high temp. Um, and I don't really use Tallboy much and it's a harder machine to get on my bench. So this just happened to be a machine we're putting it in. So is what it is. Did you share the gifted membership info with Steve? Um, apparently it was multiple people had the issue and then all of a sudden Google fixed it. So that's Google for you. So which one's the heater? This is the heater. Yeah, which one's the thermistor? So hopefully this time I don't screw up and not label them like I did before. So that one's a thermistor. Because if you remember the last time we rebuilt a tool head, I forgot to mark which wire was which. And we did not have a fun time. Let me see. Yeah, it, it has something to do with the way everything was refunded. I don't know what's going on. I just sent the email just to be like, yo, hey, what you gotta do? I, I just wanna see if you two will actually like compensate. I doubt they will, I just wanna see. How do I rate the Fizek Trident kit? Hardware was good. Um, all the fans failed. Every fan in here failed. I had, it, well, except for the uh, electronics fans. Those, those still work. But in, in regards to the uh, the hot end fan and the uh, the park cooling fan, both of them failed. So it's it's a bomb in a box. So it's pretty much somebody walking down the aisle in AliExpress with a shopping cart with a shopping list of every part you need to build one of these machines, throwing everything into the cart at probably the cheapest cost per unit. So a lot of the times with these AliExpress kits, some stuff is pretty good. Rails across the board pretty much have been pretty solid for a while now from AliExpress and other cheaper market, Asian market vendors. Um, but things like fans and wiring and electronics, you might be a little sus, so. Uh, da, da, da. Manually turning, well, sometimes they get a little stuck and uh, these things don't have a ton of torque, so you have to. Uh, I don't like the idea of buying from Ali. It is what it is. I mean, let's be honest. Half the time, if you buy it off Amazon, you're just paying double. You're, it's the same thing off Ali. It's just you're paying somebody else to get it for you, and you're paying more. So, is what it is. Do I have a price for this hot end? Oh, yeah. Um, so, this hot end will be available, I've been told, end of September, early October at around $95 US for the package. So that's, I'm assuming nozzle, uh, fan, all the gubbins it comes with. I'm assuming it comes with mounts. Don't quote me on that though. Okay, so we have that off and we are going to be putting together stealth burner, yay. So I'm using clockwork too. So we're just gonna slap that on front. So I've never actually put one of these together. So let's uh, close this up so I don't accidentally break the doors off again because I've done that in the past. Overhead camera set up. Ooh, zoom in. There we go. Okay. I have no idea what size screws I need for this. Um, we will figure it out live. So I will say one thing right off the bat. Um, unlike the Revo, there is no, oh man, that's gonna focus on that constantly. Get back in that corner. Um, unlike the Revo, there is no uh, stress relief for these wires, okay? So be careful. Um, 
you should always be careful with anything with embedded wires, obviously. But just be aware, you may need to be a little extra careful with this guy. Let's see. I don't even know what... Yeah, it's got to go this way, yeah, because... Yeah, the wire's going to go there, okay. Okay, let me, let me clean this up quickly, because it's actually really tight fit in here. Going to... there we go. It's not like it helped. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yesterday, I killed a Revo heater. I, I It's destroyed. It's garbage. Um, I had an issue with one of my Revos that turns out I fixed really easily. But for troubleshooting purposes, I went to swap in another Revo heater. And as part of that, I had to strip the wires. Well, what happened was... There's four wires that come out of the Revo. Oh, Tony gifted five community memberships. Cheers, thank you. So you have your you have your fancy wire strippers here, okay? And there's four wires that come out of the Revo. Two heater, two thermistor. Well, I had one of the heater wires like in, in the thing and I went like that. However, see this spring there? Focus, focus, focus on the spring. Focus on the spring, yeah. So anyway, see the spring? It had, act, I had accidentally pinched a thermistor wire in there. So when I did that, I also ripped the thermistor wire out of the Revo. And if you know how a Revo works, it's directly into the heater block. You can't replace that wire. It, it's, yeah, dead. So that was my fault. <laughs> so this kills the Revo, unfortunately. F, yeah, F. F's in chat. Wow, this is a really tight mount. This is why beta mount. I'm just going to see if I can... That's that one. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Um... Do I use the same screws or do I use shorter screws? Let's see here. So yeah, oh wait, this doesn't have, okay. Um, M38, oh, I've got tons of M38s. Let's go with some silver ones, yes. Fair Frozen, $5, cheers. I'm about to destroy a Revo heater too. I'll be damn thing keeps sticking to my 0.4 nozzle and mine has a silicone sock toasted and broken already. Oof. I will say um, my beta unit, I had a year of no issue with my beta unit Revo um, until I um, I crashed it and bent the, uh, the, 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 the knob or the heat break. Oh, I got to put some heat sets in here. I should probably do that. Uh, shoot. Where did everything go? Crud. Oh, there we go. All my stuff that's under here is a mess right now because I'm organizing the room up. So I've got to get some heat sets. And no, I'm not going to put LEDs in here. I have the extra wires to put the um, the LEDs, the NeoPixels, but we're not going to bother with that today. We're just going to put this together. We'll put the ones though in case we decide to do a uh, input shaper later. 400 viewers. We got 400 viewers. Hi, everyone. If you haven't said hi, everyone say hi. Introduce yourself. I think there's none from the front, but I got a mount now. Pretty sure all the screws would be the same. Engagement. Dang it, I forgot my water. I forgot my water bottle. Dang it. Buy low, sell high. <laughs> Work in the algorithm. Hey. Don't forget to like that smash button, too. I forgot my water. I was like, I'm going to get a drink for my, uh, I can't say the company name anymore. 
because they sponsor people and people yell at me if I say their name. Although, this did show up. Look, look, I, I totally got the creator edition. We got the creator edition in the house. Listen to that ratchet edition. Listen to that. That's quality BC engineering there. Fair Frozen, five dollars. Cheers. Uh, I've had a crash or two, nothing broken, thankfully, but I'm a real submerged in PTG blah blah death. Um, the Revo in there, I completely filled it like a uh, PCCF blob about half the size of my fist the other day, and it's still working. So, um, I've destroyed the sock, but it's still working. Bots? Do we have bots? We haven't had bots in a while. The sex bots have been leaving us alone, thankfully. Or, or, or am I thankful? Like, they, it was engagement. Are the bots gone? I'm assuming we used to get the uh, the sex bots like at least what three or four times a stream. Pretty much as soon as we hit about any stream where I had more than 250 people, they would show up, which was pretty much every stream. Uh, Fair Frozen, 55, $2, cheers. I destroyed my V6 with CFPC, I know that feel. Yeah. But uh, on the bright side, we have now, we're... Oh, here we go. Got all the... Uh, all the parts for the uh, Salad Fork build are now printed, and they're all CFPC, so... And it's all 0.6 nozzles, so we should have some fat. Come on, fade, focus. Let's get some fat layer lines in there. So there we go. So that's all done. That cool over here. That'll work. Okay. Uh, would you release the... I don't have the actual... I didn't design this. I can't CAD myself out of cardboard box. Um, but somebody on the team whipped it together, and it... it. I think it still needs a little work before it's actually fully released. This was basically designed to the CAD info of the, the, the this, I believe. Um, so it needs a little tweaking for it to be, like, proper, because, like, it's really tight on the fitment. So we need to, uh... A few adjustments to make it prime time ready. So we'll see. Uh, wait for stream just popped in at work. You're at work, you should be working. Unless you're working from home. Ooh, that is tight. Don't want to pinch the wires. Okay. So that is that. So the wires come up through there. We have that. That seems to be pretty good there. Um. So we need two wires through, or two screws through there. How long are those screws? It's been a while since I put a stealth burner together. I don't know how long the screws are. Eh, maybe it's the same screws. Reduce, reuse, recycle. And for those curious, this is all Prusament ASA. Uh, this is Prusament Galaxy Black, and this is uh, Prusament Orange. And unfortunately, I forgot there was like a little bit of a skirt left over from a previous print, and it left a line. And uh, because I'm so low on Prusament Orange, I don't want to reprint. Just in case I gotta save it for something, so. Got a racing stripe on the bottom, makes it go faster. 
adds character. Exactly. Okay. So that is that. Take the old fan out of here without breaking the bearing. First time I ever did this, I pushed the fan and I snapped the stupid little thing that holds the actual fan to the, 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 the motor. And it, I didn't realize until I built the whole thing up. Okay, so now this goes up in there. some excess material. Is my hat blocking everything? Hopefully not. There's a little bridge there. Get under the stupid little tab. Turn that. There we go. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. So there we go. We got that. And now we need a 50 15 that we're going to destroy. All right. 50 15. Is this a 50 15? GD's time. Yep. Sure. Let's go with that. I actually had to look for one of these. I had to steal this off my Ender. Because I, I, I thought I had more 50-15s, and it uh, turns out I did not. So I'll take the top off. Get my big snips. Uh, the little screw holes. Don't need those anymore. Get yourself a file. Make it nice and smooth. I like to file it away from the motor. That way all the gunk doesn't go in. Yeah, try a little more first. Don't try and take a chunk out of your finger. I've done it. It sucks. The pain. Yeah, it's fun when you do... This is just a, you know... Oop. Generic AliExpress GD Stein, like, $5 fan. It's, it's really fun when you do it to, like, a $25 Delta fan. Which, by the way, we did contact Delta to see if they would make a specific fan for this per specific use case. And they will if we bought 10,000 units from them. So, um... In terms of things that ain't happening, I'll take that. See, one of these days I'll be smart and bring my Dremel down here. So I, I can actually do this with a Dremel instead of a file. But not this day. Group buy. <laughs> Put the extra fans in the merch store. Um, I don't think I'll be able to put move 10,000 fans. This, this ain't no LTT. Yeah, don't do, don't do Noctuas. Noctuas would not. You shouldn't be, except for electronics cooling, don't use a Noctua on a 3D printer. They have horrible static pressures. This file is horrible for this. Okay. Okay. Okay, so 
Let's see, did I have enough? Did I take enough off? Where's the work? There we go, make sure everything spins freely. Okay, let me put the locking screws in. I'm gonna grab some. If everyone buys threes fans. <laughs> okay. Where'd my bit go? Is that the right bit? Oh, it worked. Eleven dollars now, it's not five dollars. Okay. It's been a while. I I buy fans by like the half dozen usually at the minimum. And again, we're not playing around with uh, LEDs. I'm not putting NeoPixels in here just because uh, th that would take all day. Did I turn the music off? No, the music's on. It's just quiet. It's background music. Like, I could turn the music up. But the thing is, if usually if you're listening to me and you can't hear the music, pretty much everyone else can. So it might be your audio setup. So you might need to turn your speakers up or you have something with your headphones. But most people can hear the background music. So... I don't like turning it up because then the people who can already hear the background music get kind of annoyed. It's too loud, apparently. So. Oh. Coda? Coda. You want to come say hi? It's okay, buddy. Oh, it's a good boy. Uh, people are saying the music quiet. Okay, I'll turn the music up then. Actually, yeah, this music is a little quiet. There we go. Or maybe I'm just too quiet. Let me see here. Which button turns me up? Nope, it's not that one. Oh, you good boy? How you doing? Want attention? See, I, I try to work, and then this 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 guy, this guy. Sad looking doggo. Well, he's looking up. Anytime a dog looks up at that like forty five degree angle, he always looks sad. Like if you look at him from the front, he don't look sad. Oh, oh he's a good boy. Right, you good boy. I think the usual music setting. Okay, well, it's how's the music now? Okay. You're getting dog fur over everything. I had to clean your dog fur out of the last machine I built because it got it all in the grease. Oh, jungle boy, oh, jungle boy, oh, jungle boy. Oh, jungle boy. <laughs> I'm trying to work. Can't you see I'm working? Okay. Uh, what lab mic? I use a Rode wireless with a uh, just a generic lab mic connected to it. Okay, that's enough hair in the print room. Yeah, I got the 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 audio's going, the music's going. I hear music after David could use your laugh setup. What is like literally my laugh setup is super simple. It's just a road wireless go. And then the, the, the receiver is literally just plugged into the mic in on the computer. Like I don't have any of those fancy uh, audio decks or whatever. It's it's just plugged right into the uh, computer. Like the only the only fancy like dedicated stream tool I have is a stream deck. And the only reason I have a stream deck is because um, the the DIY one I built, I ran it. I needed more buttons because I, I, I do punch-ins now because I got a 4K camera. So David uses the room mic. 
I've tried to listen to David's stream, and yeah, it was a little boomy, so I kind of... I gave it the college try, but my ears are... I'm only human. Okay. Let's, uh... Put this together now. How are my belts? My belt's still good on this. Do I need to tension stuff up? Eh, they're okay. They're okay. How's everything doing? Everything seems to be okay. I haven't checked anything on this machine in a while since we built it. Oh, no dust. Nothing that looks funky. Okay, let's put it together. So, obviously, these wires are a little long, so we're going to have to crimp and strip and do some shortening of them. So, well, it's really nice. They, let's see. How, how long do they give you? They give you about a meter. So, if you're putting this in something like an ender or something with an umbilical, you're, you're fine. But, obviously, we can't do that here. We're running through drag chain, so we're just going to have to crimp some finnings on um it does come with connectors to connect it to your board um with uh looks like duponts and jsts you have some options there Ooh, and heater ones that just plug right in so they do give you some options um but we're gonna have to splice it in because it's a it's a voron so, is what it is. Okay, that's all together there, and that's all there. If you want to see the package here, um, it's actually a really clean package. So there's that. There's it from underneath. There's it from the back. Fan blows through there. You got your ducting coming down, the blowout there. And they are aimed at the nozzle. So we're all good there. You get that nice tight little package that we're kind of used to. Um, so, where'd I put that little piece of filament? Because I took it out of this, and I'm going to need it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Try playing with the audio compressor setting on OBS on the mic channel. When you turn your head on the left, you're quiet. When... Oh, it's because the mic's right here. Like, if I were to put it right in the middle, I'm sure... There we go. But then the problem, every time I get something out of my... Um, pocket I bump it so let's try this no because I'm gonna bump it yeah I'll just put it there for now I don't know so that goes in there and let's see do I need a longer one or a shorter one? Oh, we need to shorten that up put on the shirt Is I don't always have a shirt that I can put it on. Because unfortunately, if I get it too close like, to the beard, do you hear the beard? Proper audio compressor settings will alleviate the issue. I don't. You're speaking mumbo jumbo to me. Okay, that's the hit one. Like I am running a slight noise. I am running a noise gate. Or not a noise gate, a uh, a noise filter. Um, just so you guys don't hear the background noise as much. Oh, actually, shoot, I might have screwed that up because these are too tight. Forgot these ones are thicker than the afterburner ones, actually. Uh, desktop. Let's bring the camera in. Also, OBS did update recently, so RTX voice. Um, I don't know if I can use RTX voice because I don't have an RTX card in here. Yeah, shoot. Let's see. So I, I'm not running an RTX card in here, so I don't know if I can use RTX voice. That goes right about there. Yeah, good enough. That'll work. Okay, that's good. 
Okay. Oh. Oops. Okay. So you gotta come out there. You go there. That goes there. It's actually the first time I've actually put in a production um, stealth burner. <laughs> Every stealth burner I have so far is a beta one. Like, there isn't much of a difference between the production or the final beta and the production one, but this is the first time we got a production one. And these might be too short. Oh, wait. Um, they use 50 mils, don't they? Now. Oh, shoot. We might have an issue here. I don't know if I have 50 mil screws. Quit dropping the brand new hot end. I forgot. I need to find a 50 mil screw. Or two 50 mil screws. Uh, M350s. Nope. Whoopsie doodles. We might not have 50 mils. Nope. 35. Why do I have 35s? What am I going to use 35s for? Hmm, how are we going to do this? So there is the backup option, which, oh shoot, I don't think you can do the backup. No, we got rid of that option. Shoot. You used to be able to use the 40s and just attach this and then the fan would sit on top and it wouldn't be a big issue. But now I got to find some 50s. Where can I find some 50s? I know I have some somewhere, but I can't remember where. Uh, the LDO came with an extra two stealth burner. Good point. I'll be back in a second. Actually, I'll just keep talking because you guys can hear me. So, um, how's everyone doing today? Anything exciting going on? Did I, did I miss anything? Like, what, what's new and exciting in, uh, the world of 3D printing? Okay, that's some Mandalorian armor. Why do I have Mandalorian armor in this box? Okay, nope. Da, da, da. Oh, great, that box spilt. Okay. Da, 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 da. Huzzah. The queen died. I know! God save the queen, rule of Britannia. Yeah, the queen died. But I mean, like 96, you can't, you can't really complain about 96. Like, that's a pretty good run. Like, pretty much any of us feeble mortals with our not best, best healthcare money can buy will be lucky if we make it to 96. I know, God Save the King. I know that's gonna... I only knew the song one way. always one that's a little gummy. I just know I I I just can't wait for King Charles the third to be on all my money now. Oh that's gonna that's gonna be great. Okay these are too short. So the queen was the queen for so long it's not that she was the first coronation to ever, or it's not, or what is it? It's not that she was, uh, I remember what, somebody said it about her coronation. Her coronation was like the only one to be broadcast on TV ever. There's like, not only was she the first, she's the only one. Like she's been the queen since forever. It's like what, 53? So... I really need to buy more screws. I am running low on a lot of screw lengths. First televised. Yeah, like it was what, 50? Yeah, 53, I believe. So. There we go. I 
about that squeakiness. There we go. Nozzle clears, we're good there. Hopefully the nozzle height's the same and the probe still works. We'll find out. Uh, so hers was the first televised. Yeah, and the only one televised, like. Oh my God, of course I had to pick the big printer to do this with. It was either, it was either the fat printer or the tall printer. And I went with the fat printer, so. Okay, so this one. That's a thermistor. That one's the heater. I'm assuming this fan is this one. You know, I don't have anything marked on it, which I thought I did, but I don't. Okay, so that's this fan. Wait, no. No. This one is this one. So we gotta shorten this one. Shorten this one. Um, for those that you know want a better camera angle of what I'm doing right now, it, I'm crimping and stripping MicroFit threes. Um, I, I believe I've put you through enough of this over the years that you don't need the closest view in the world of it right now. But if you really want, I'll see if I can figure out a close angle. I just don't want to have to take off all these panels for no reason just to get a camera angle essentially. We do overhead. We do overhead. There we go. That'll work. Good enough. Uh, where's my microfit kit? Microfit kit. Did I put that somewhere I shouldn't have. I did. Shoot. Go up here. Where's my microfit? Microfit kit. I had you, and I put you somewhere, and I don't know where I put you. Not in there. You're not in there. Not in there. Not in here. Nope. Oh, found another 5015 though. That's good to know. 4030s. Where did I put my microfits? Right over here. Oh, there we go. Crip cam. Come on, you, you, you guys have seen me crimp these wires a billion, billions and billions of times. So I don't think we need to uh, go over it again. Okay, so that one's a thermistor, right? Yeah, okay, so this one's the other fan. And that is, so this one's. This is the 5700th time we've crimped Microfit 3s. We are getting exceedingly good at it. Discord about documentary. You did? What Discord? Oh, yeah. Um, I read that late at night. I, I meant to text you. I will get back to you about it. And then stuff came up. Little guy starts school next week, so we've all been kind of just been busy doing family stuff. There we go. Which, uh, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, stream will start a little bit later, uh, like 2.30 or 3 o'clock. I don't know exactly what time, but stream will start a little later next week. And then the actual schedule itself will change, and I'll let you guys know the final one. I'll post it on the Discord or something. I'm running really low on these. Oh, shoot. Hopefully I have enough. Okay. So, uh, black is this side. Okay. Did I do that 
that right? Yes, I did. And red. What's that say? Black, red, red. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, heater wires. Well, actually, let's do thermistor. Thermistor is long, so thermistor comes to like. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what kind of thermistor this is. I'm realizing. Does it say on here? Oh, there we go. 104 NT. Okay. It's a 104 NT thermistor. I don't have the uh, PTC one or whatever. All I know is I'm happy this isn't fiberglass. It is kind of tight, the sleeving. There we go. So the other day I was doing some organizing in a shelf and I found a box of all my old um, PS2 games. So last night I played some Ace Combat 4. That game was awesome. And also I forgot how bad PS2 games look. You look at it through the rose tinted goggles and now you play with it and it's just blur. All the blur. Hi, Jeffrey. Fiberglass hot ends, wires. I'm fine with, you You want fiberglass next to the hot end because it's a, you know, most wires, you know, use fiberglass because of the temperature. But I like when they transition to like, you know, regular silicone or something after a couple inches. CRT to play them on. The problem is I'm not going to go hunt down a CRT. I'm not that much of a purist um, to hunt down a CRT, a big 100 pound CRT to play them on. And the thing is, I used to have a CRT, okay? I had a final year production 36 inch flat screen, flat screen Sony Wega. Um, CRT, literally like the best CRT you could buy before they stopped making CRTs. Progressive in, all that. Um, and I got rid of it because I just didn't ever use it. Like I kept it up until like, I want to say, oh geez, like 2014. Um, easily. Like I kept it for a while, but it just, I couldn't justify keeping it anymore because it, it was bloody massive and I just never use it. I just never used it. So we ended up getting rid of it. Honestly, I think I just put on the I just put on the side of the road on a sunny day with it just put like a note on Facebook Marketplace saying, hey. And it was gone within like two hours. So somebody's getting good use of it at at least. The heaviest. Oh, they were massive. I got it from work. The uh insurance company that I worked for, they had it in like a, a boardroom. And uh they got rid of it. And I bought it. The the company that I worked for, it was really nice. What they did was every year. They would do a auction, an inter-office auction. So they have like a little website on the inter, intranet um, within the office there. And what they would do is they would put all their stuff they want to get rid of up for an auction and all the profits went to a charity. So they would list like one year, they listed like 30 something 15 inch Dell LCDs for, and they started at two bucks. I picked up 20 of them. I put $2 for all of them. I ended up winning 20 of them. On the way home, I dropped 15 of them off at a pawn shop for uh, $10 each. So actually one of them, I, literally, if you don't believe me, there's one of them right now, Dell 15 inch. So there's like the last one I still have. <laughs> so yeah, so I picked up like 20 of them, for two bucks each and I sold 15 of them for 10 bucks each. And then the other two, I just, there are five I kept or gave away or whatever, like, I don't know, it's been years, but I picked up that Sony Wega for like 20 bucks. Getting it home sucked though. 
So now I have the PS2 hooked up to the, the, the crappy little 28 inch random no name brand TV I keep in the computer room. Um, that's mounted on the wall just so Calvin, if he wants to like watch a movie on a DVD. So it's hooked up to that with a uh, progressive. So it does 1080i, I believe. The PS2, Gran Turismo 4 will run at 1080i. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I like somebody pointed out, I looked it up online and then I went to the settings because I have it. And yeah, Gran Turismo 4 will run at 1080i. I was like, really? Okay. Cool. Got another printer on the way. That'll be fun. And it's a kit. And it's not a Vora. So that'll be fun. For the little guy, the PS2 game. I'm waiting for him to get old enough to play video games. Because then I could do what my parents did with me and just raise him on TV. And video games. I mean, I was raised on TV and I turned out TV. So, uh... I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm in my mid-30s and I'm a YouTuber. And I'm pretty sure like half my audience probably doesn't understand the I turned out TV joke is even from. Although actually my metrics are like mostly, you guys are all in your mid-30s roughly, so. Not a VZ bot, unfortunately. I'm waiting on that. That's still a little wet out because it's a full. I know PS2 looks a little bit better on it. Like, it's because it, it used the fact that CRTs, like, they blurred it because it looked better on a CRT and it kind of like. So what what I've done instead is I actually, I, I, I don't dabble in emulation at all. Like, it's just something I've never really done, but I I, I tried it out the other day with the uh, the PA, PCSS, PCSX2 or whatever it's called. What are the PS2 emulators called? Um... I installed that. I copied the files off of the game disk to my hard drive so I didn't download any ROMs. And then threw them into an ISO. And uh, yeah, Ace Combat at 4K uh, with 16 time anti aliasing looks a lot better than on the, the, than the PCS, than on the PS2, I will say. So, not going to complain there. Okay, so we have all that. I don't know where the cover... Oh, here's the cover. There's the cover. That goes there. Oh, the cover ain't gonna work because I got the uh, stealth burner. Shoot. Yeah, I can't put the cover on. Can't put a cover on because I got the stealth burner now. Um... Zip die. Mid thirties, and I realize I'm closer to late thirties. Um, I'm one year off exactly mid thirties, so like it doesn't sink in until you realize, hey, my son starts school next week, and then you're like, oh, and then it's Saving Private Ryan turning old. Dot gif. You're like, oh my god. I won't be able to get a cereal, unfortunately. I don't. I don't have my uh, my cover on. Did I even cereal this? No, I, I did cereal this. I did cereal it. Yeah, whatever. Good enough. It's not like they're gonna hit. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even come close to hitting. Okay. Let's power it up. Hopefully I installed everything correctly and we did it right. Print a new cover. There is a cover. I do have the cover. I have it on that, that machine. I just, 
I haven't gotten to it. I completely forgot to do it. And I'll be honest, I haven't had the cover on this for a while because I was playing around with stuff on it for a while there. So I kept changing stuff and I kept taking the cover off, putting it on, and I ended up just leaving it off. Okay. Power on. Okay, open the doors. That way if we get some sparks, we get some footage out of it at least. Okay, power's on. I can't see the where is light. It's light. Okay. I'm gonna have to drop that. I gotta drop that probe. Unfortunately, that probe is way too high. I believe. Let's see here. Oh yeah, that's way too high. That is, that is way too high. Uh, maybe, maybe. Let's let's try here. Okay, so printers, LDO V two. Or no, no, this big Papa Joey P. Big Papa Joey P. Okay, so we got that. So let's turn fan on. Okay, we're good. So fan is right. So we got the right fans in. Um, extruder. Okay, that fan heats up. And it is, wow, that heats up quick. We are gonna have to do a PID tune. We, we don't have a PID tune, so we gotta do a PID tune. Uh, machine, .cfg. Um, it's the same thermistor as a Revo, so let me just pull the one off this machine. I can't remember what it's called. It's the 104 NT. I just don't know exactly what it's listed under. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it is the same one. Okay, so we already got that. Actually, no, it's a dash four, right? It's dash four, I believe. According to this, it's dash four. What we got? We got 104 NT dash four. Okay, I don't even know if dash four is even in Clipper. Save and restart. Yeah, it's gotta be dash two. I don't know, I have all my Revos as dash two, so it don't matter. Okay. Let's home it and see if I gotta drop that probe. Home all. There we go. Is it NT or GT? NT. Why? Do I have GT? No, oh, I have NT. Oh, I have GT. Okay. NT dash four. For NT-4. Then what do I have in the Prusas? Am I running the wrong thermistor in the Prusas? Or in the, the Revos? Ah, whatever. Figure it out. Okay, hopefully the nozzle position didn't change. Okay, we're good there. Okay, let's try 104 NT-4. See if that works. Yeah, 104 NT-4 doesn't work. Clipper, thermistor types, configuration, thermistor, where are thermistor types, common thermistors, there we go, so, oh I gotta put this whole thing here, ATC, that's why that. Yeah, because, okay. That, printer.cfg. Boom, boom. Save and restart. So I'm running the wrong thermistor in one of my revos. Oops. Oh well. That's okay. 
Okay, hold them all. There's an itty bitty fruit fly in this room, and I don't know where he came from, but he's here all of a sudden. He's annoying me. Okay. So, uh, will I come forward? Okay, let's go down. Yep, I gotta drop that. Okay. I don't know, but I'm about to re-PID tune all my hot ends. <laughs> so, I'll do that while, uh, we get this printing. So, first I gotta take this apart, because we gotta drop that probe, because that probe is way too high. So... Joseph, $20, cheers, no message, just support. Thank you, Joseph, I hope you're enjoying the content. And by content, I mean realizing I did this wrong. Or, not wrong, it just, you know, we gotta go one step forward, two steps back, and then do the hokey pokey or something. Desk clean floor, not so much. I threw in the garbage. Okay, so. Try there. That should be okay. on and see if we get the light. Use the file. Orange and black. I know I like it. Is Stealth Burner a different filament or is it age lighting that makes it? Uh, it's all Prusament. The orange is all Prusament. All, all this orange, this is the exact same spool as everything else. Oh yeah, we're good. We're good. We should be good. And if not, we're going to find out how good the uh, the Drop Effect XG hot end handles a nozzle crash. Worst case scenario. I mean, it's testing. So, if you want an up close look, here it is. That is our current setup. So we still got the CW1 back there, but we've got the uh, Stealth Burner up front with the XG underneath. What did I knock over? Oh, silver paint. I need that. Okay. Home all. What was wrong? Oh, be this nozzle sits a little lower than the um, the Rapido that I had in there before. Or not the Rapido, the, um, the Raptor that I had in there before. And um, I had to drop the uh, uh, probe so that it would trigger before the nozzle crashes into the bed. Because you don't want the, the, the nozzle to crash to the bed. Uh, is it a, no, this is a Trident. It's a Voron Trident. So the only difference between, if you're curious, the only difference between a Voron Trident, this guy, and a Voron 2.0, the gantry, so your XY motion, is exactly the same on both. The only difference is on the Trident, the bed moves and the gantry stays rigid. On a V2, the... Uh, the gantry moves up and down and the bed stays rigid. So the bed stays at the bottom. Okay, so let's uh, move that. Just down. Okay, we're good. Okay, let's uh, tram everything out. Because this is probably all. There we go. So right now what it's doing, if you, you don't know what it's doing, uh, there's three lead screws for the Z and they're independent motors. So when it's moving, it moves all together. But what it's doing right now, it's probing each corner 
And then it's going to take the measurement from that and then adjust each of these lead screws independently so that the bed itself is trammed out or so the bed is trammed out to the motion of the gantry. So it's X, Y and the bed are trammed. So you don't technically need to run a bed mesh. So that with the queen's death along with the king, we rename loonies to Chuck Bucks or Chuckies for short. Um, I'm not looking forward to King Charles on my money because in five years, I'm going to have to change it all again to, uh, was it King? Is it Philip? Is it Philip the next one? Or William? No, William? No. William's the redhead, right? It's Philip. Right? Because it's Prince Philip right now, isn't it? And then it's George. Yeah. Or William. William. Yeah. William. Yeah. So yeah, so it'll be William. So yeah, so I don't know. I'm so used to the queen being on my money. And for those, no, I don't have my wall on. In, in Canada, oh yeah, Phillips was the queen's wife or husband. Um, that makes sense. Okay, uh, let's PID tune this guy. PID tune. So PID settings, PID calibrate. So we are gonna move you X. Actually, this is 350, right? 175, Y 175, Z 50. PID tune, calibrate, and we're gonna calibrate at 240 because I normally print ABS on this machine. So we're gonna PID tune at 240. See how quickly that ramps up. Yep, yeah, we did update it. I did update, uh, oh, hey Renee. Yeah, it's ATC. I did update that in the config. Um, machine printer.cfg. Uh, that's the bed, where's the extruder? There it is, yeah. So we did update that there, ATC. So. It means I got to update some other machines because I'm running the wrong thermistor. So let me do that because I'm pretty sure E3D Revo thermistor. Uh, learn more. Love that first heat up smell. So, let's see here. Ooh, that jumps up quick. So we got what? We got heat up started at around what? 119.40 and we hit temperature at 120. So 50 seconds to get to temperature, roughly. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Yep, so I gotta redo all my PID tunes on everything running a Revo. <laughs> I have the wrong thermistor in there. Oops. Oopsie doodles. That explains so. Well, actually, it doesn't explain anything. I don't want to restart. And for those that don't know, anytime you install a new hot end, um, be aware you you will smell like a oily burning smell for a little bit um usually there's like greases and oils that get on hot ends when they're being built um the first time you heat them up that burns off so now you know see this is why i didn't use 104 nt on here because it gives me an issue or maybe this is just such an old version of clipper i'm running on here So let's try Big Papa Joey P. 
or let's try LDLG too. Machine, machine. Extruder bed, no. This one is. Save and restart. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so. This version of Clipper is so old that one I'm running on here, it doesn't have the 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 104 NT on it. <laughs> the NT is the updated version of the GT. It is what it is. Okay. Okay. So let's re PID tune that guy while I'm thinking about it. In a good position to do it. Yeah. Okay. So let's see here. That's done. Save config. Boom. Update my clippers. Oh, every time I update clipper, I break something on this machine. I don't want to update clipper. Every time I do it, I break something. Fine. I'll do it. What, which, what's the little minimum? I don't even know. Can I update it in this version? I think the version of Clipper I'm running on that machine is so old I can't update it. <laughs> uh, updates, view versions. Okay, here we go. Uh, update. Uh, yeah, see, I'm running 9.1. So if I update it, I need to. Um, I need to go and do the um, like reflash the board. <laughs> so we're. Because it hasn't been an issue, we're just going to leave it as is, I think, on that machine. I mean, if it ain't broke, I've been using it for a year, so I can't really say it's 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 broken broken. PID tune's a PID tune, right? Right? I actually probably should have checked the values to see if they were different before. Oh, that's why. Okay. Because when I got the Revo, that the 104 NT wasn't in the clipper docks at the time. So we all use this value and it worked fine. And then since then, the new version has come out. So that's why I'm running GT on all my machines because I've just been copying the same thermistor type from that machine. <laughs> so when I got my beta unit and the rest of the guys on the Voron team got our beta units, that the NT version wasn't in the Clipper, wasn't in Clipper yet. So that makes sense why, we're, why I'm running GT instead of NT. But if you got the new version, you might as well run it. So. Speaking of running it, let's print something. Um, a delete. Let's do ourselves a, you want to do a Nero cube? Let's do a Nero cube. Um, Cause it's 3.30 and I got till five. So while I pull this up, if you had a chance, enter to win some Polymaker filament. Link in the description. Do that now. Trident. Do I have Trident on here? I have to have Trident in this. I don't have Trident on this computer. Then what was I printing all this stuff on? This makes no sense. Oh. Okay, whatever. Well, I guess we'll use that. Oh, there's Trident. Okay, there's Trident. I'm like, how do I not have Trident on this computer? I printed a bunch of stuff on it. Okay, so let's let's see what do we got speeds and feeds. I don't even know. Uh, speeds and feeds. Oh wow, that's slow. Let's let's do toasty v two point four. There we go. That was what I wanted. Okay, PLA. Sure, whatever. Fan. Cooling max. Cool. First layer, blah, blah, blah. Print end, print start. Cool. Slice down. Let's load some filament in here. Um, now, shout out to Polymaker. They sent a whole bunch of filament. Ugh. 
Uh, we got some, let's do some PLA Pro. Uh, you guys want blue, silver, what do we got? Red, blue, silver, red. Let's do blue. I, I don't print with blue enough. Let's do blue. Ugh. Ooh, oh, that's a nice blue. So this is PL, Polylite PLA Pro. And if you want to get a spool of this like yourself, link in the description. You can buy it. Or, hey, you might just win it. Okay. Red for contrast. I think blue would work. Blue? Yeah, we'll do blue. I don't put blue enough. Okay, let's see here. Not bad. Not a bad pop. Not a bad pop. Reusable bag. Meh. Again, for those uh, curious about my filament situation, this is how I store my filament. Out in the open. Winter is coming, which means mid to low 30% humidity in this room. Which is pretty much what you get in the bag. <laughs> Mike fell off. Mike fell off. There we go. There we go. Uh, Nick is going to love that bag popping. Yeah, you pop the bag so you can check it's fresh. It's like when you open up, you know, a Snapple and it goes pop. That's how you know it's fresh. How are you supposed to know it's fresh unless it makes a hiss when you open it? How are you supposed to know? I forgot how much heat loading filament in this one machine. There we go. Oh, nope, that came off. And this is how you get a tangle. That goes there. I gotta move that. I gotta move this spool. I put the spool holder here because I'm low on room on my desk, so all my printers are stacked side by side. So I put the spool holders on top, but this one's in a spot where all these filaments like to pop off the spool and jam up. So it's not a huge issue. It actually works just fine. I printed a whole bunch of stuff. It's just loading it is kind of annoying. Loaded, upload and print. Let's save what we just slice, export, 50 minutes, sure, whatever. Save. It's printing at war on setting, so. Uh, cube. We'll speed it up if we need to. Yeah. Yeah, you really only need to worry about humidity if you live in an area where you're like, if you're printer room is inside you have a climate controlled house with like central air and you don't live on the water um with your doors open and like like this is my basement i've never seen it above 40 percent humidity down here like I, I i've used petg spools like literally my head of mames remember we did the head of mame build the petg that i used to print those which we built during the summer there um was the filament that I used to build my V1.5 four, almost five years ago. Okay, four and a half years ago. I printed it with that filament and then I took that spool and it's been sitting out in the open in my basement for four and a half years. And then I used that spool again and it printed just fine, no popping or anything, the filament prints fine. So. Uh, a VZ bot. I've talked with Vez about it. It will be an all wheel drive. But it's gonna be like an all metal, all like all in kit. So it's it will be a while because stuff's gotta get manufactured. So uh, what about UV light? There is no UV light in this room. The, the the window is blocked. There is no UV light in this room. Like if I turn all the lights off, this room is pitch black. There is no UV light. And that's because I got resin printers in here. So Okay. 
So the problem with this camera, it focuses on me even when I zoom in. Uh, UV light will degrade some filaments like ABS over time. Um, but it's not like, usually unless like it's, it's gotta be direct sunlight for a while for that to happen. What uh, has more odor? Resin, but um, Jay, $2 is a garage clear of fun. I know it's, it's coming along. The problem is I'm actually working in the garage now doing the Mando armor stuff. So I'm making a mess of it. Cause I've got, I've got a bucket of Mandalorian parts out there, but on the bright side, um, getting to working on the blaster. So I've got the base coat of metallic. It, it looks silver, but it's bronze, but it's called silver. I don't know, but this is like the base coat. Now I got to start masking stuff off so I can paint silver and then texture stuff. But there's the blaster. The blaster is coming along. So this is what I've been working on. The wet sanding this sucked. This, this was like, an hour of my life just wet sanding this. And I know that's not a lot of time sanding because I, I do a textured finish on my stuff. So it hides some of the layer lines, but even that alone, wet sanding this sucked. So. I don't even know how my Z offset is. It should be fine because it's a boron. How many pieces, oh, how many pieces was the blaster? Um. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's also scope bits like iron sights that I need to glue on after it's printed. So it's like, this is seven parts right here. Um, and it's all sanded and then it's all held together with, um, uh, there's some dowels through it and then it's E6000 holding it all together. So this is, this is solid. This ain't going anywhere. And if you're curious about a weight, I don't think it weighs as much as the helmet. It weighs, yeah, it weighs more. Uh, 1.2 kilograms for the blaster. So is that the final color? No, this is just the base color. So I'm going to mask off some areas to paint silver. Um, like the same silver, almost the same. it's a slightly different shade of silver than I used on the armor. And then um, there's gonna be like detail work, accent pieces, highlight pieces and whatnot, or colors. But this is just like the base coat. So some areas will be this color, but not everything. So it's heavy, 1.2 kilograms, so not heavy at all. The helmet's like 0.8 kilograms for those curious. The whole, the whole suit of armor, including the blaster, is if I remember correctly, I went through it easily eight, six to eight kilograms of filament printing everything. So wasn't up to the standards of the armor. What do you mean? Not up to the standards. Why not vapor finish? Um, because if you vapor smooth it, it gives it like a sheen and I, I don't, I want it flat. Like I didn't, there's a lot of little details. I didn't want to get rounded by sanding or by vapor smoothing. Plus I have literally like 20, to 30 pieces here. I don't want, I'm not going to vapor smooth. I don't have anywhere to vapor smooth them that much. It was too boring. That's not, that's, there's going to be multiple colors to that. And it's the blaster. The blaster doesn't stand out. Like the blaster I'm kind of making look original, I think. Okay. Let's see how. Okay, there you go. Filament's coming out. So that's good. So it does work. Although it's waiting for the temperature to stabilize. PID chart is being a little bouncy. It's bouncy more than a Revo. Come on. Okay, I gotta go up a bit. Uh, is that offset? 0.5. I don't know 
why I have Skur on. Crunchy, don't kill a nozzle in one pass. Yeah, it was just the tra the travel. I just had to slightly adjust my Z offset. Oh, I don't have the I didn't install LEDs on this. How much uh, support material do you estimate you use? Um, not a lot. I printed a lot of stuff in ways that would minimize support use. Um, like some stuff didn't use any support, surprisingly. Um, but probably about out of everything I printed, probably a good twenty percent. 15 to 20 percent of it went right into the bin but yeah this is not the final color this is just the base color so if something gets scratched or scuffed this was what what you will be under the final color so like this little area down here this will be like basically this will be the up color so a lot of the stuff that you see sticking up will be silver this will be like this will remain actually this might this will stay, that'll be silver, that'll be silver, this will be the same, this will be silver, that'll be silver. There, there's, there's, you'll see. I gotta mask it all up and paint it all and that's gonna take a long time, I think. And then some of it's gonna get, um, I'm gonna hit with bed liner to give it a, uh, the grips, like the, the pistol grip's gonna be silver, but the actual, like, so this will be silver, okay? So this will be all silver, the trigger will be silver and whatnot. And then this part will be, I'm gonna texture with um, bed liner. Same with like this down here. This part right here will be bed liner with the dark steel uh, metallic paint as well. And then there'll be the little blue accents in there. there. There'll be colors. It's just, this is the first coat essentially. And it's a color that if I forget to paint something, it's still a color that kind of looks like a gun. So good enough. Okay, let me stack some filament boxes up here so we can actually see what's going on. Oh, look at this. We have some wonderful Polymaker filament boxes. Perfect for the occasion. So if you need to get some filament, why not check out Polymaker? Not only can you use it to print with, you can use it to hold your cameras up. Uh, I don't think I should have like... Actually... I have lights now. I forgot about this. I bought lights. I forgot I did this. I forgot that this bench isn't bolted to the to the wall. <laughs> All of my monitors are shaking right now, by the way. silver screws no accent piece they, this, this was like 30 bucks on Amazon Canada for two of these lights so I'm not really gonna complain about these lights I got one going over there just so I have a, a face light now I, I've never had a face light and the fact that I wear a hat now I made my face dark so I got a face light now plan on reprinting my Voron parts and polymaker ABS there you go uh, a good, not a good chunk, but it's, uh, uh, some of the Mando armor is ABS, uh, Polymaker ABS. A lot of it is bulk ABS, so um, a lot of Replitech MG94 because they have big old spools that work really good for it, which is what it is. Um, and they're in town, so when I ran out, I just walked over there and bought some. Well, drove over there and bought some. It is nice to have manufacturers in town. I, you can't really beat that. Should have installed the LEDs. If I was installing the LEDs, we would still be installing LEDs right now. Hopefully the PC has enough power for this. I don't know, how, many, how much power can you push over a USB hub? Okay, mobile. Yeah, how bright can I go? That bright. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, it's USB 3, but it's through a hub. And it's working, so. How many watts does this draw, anyways? 10 watts. So it's USB 5 volt, 2 amp. Moving along nicely. Um, does this version have speeds and feeds? No. I don't have the speeds and feeds on this version of Clipper. Actually, this makes it. Yeah. It is a cube. And I'm going to go get my water bottle because I'm thirsty. I'll be back in one minute. I have returned. There we go. Yeah, it's plugging along pretty good. Can't really complain. So let's see here. I don't know how many, what the wattage is of this heater though. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Renee, if you are in chat, um, do you happen to know the wattage of the heater? They actually, uh, just drop back to XG. I know Rap Rapido, you got to be careful with. Rapido, people don't, re some people don't realize how much power Rapido draws uh, during full power up on the big one. Um, how many watts is it? Yeah, so the 290C in one minute, I believe it, because we did 240 in uh, 50 seconds, and it, it's getting pretty close to the bed heater output. Yeah, Rapido, you connect to the bed heater outfit. You connect it to a chonky thermistor or a chonky MOSFET. Yeah, it doesn't say how many watts it is. Rapido draws, power falls off. Yeah, the Rapido, it's it's a PTC. Is it a PTC? It's the same type of heating, heating type setup like a, a Rebo, where as it heats up, it draws less power. So like a Rebo technically can't run away because even if you give it like raw 24 volts or even higher, it as it heats up, it draws less power. So it technically can't really run away like a traditional heater. Well, the, a traditional heater will just keep melt going up until it melts down. Glad you can make it, Orville. So yeah, what's going on? Let's let's check the Twitter and see what people are saying. Mm. Uh, 
go. And remember, if you haven't had a chance yet, make sure you log in or sign up to win yourself some Polymaker filament. We give away a spool every stream. And that's what we're printing right now. And it's printing pretty good. So I can't really, can't really say anything bad about that. Don't have any, how many, Justin, how many heaters are you running on your octopus? Well, actually, no, you only got one bed, but I'm so used to running SSRs, so. Uh, does this support aftermarket nozzle? Um, if you happen to have an aftermarket nozzle that has M4 thread, it will. But otherwise, no. It, it uses M4 thread. So you have a smaller, um, less material for the, the heater to transition heat through to the filament on the bright side. I see you use the idlers. Um, I'm using the idlers that explode, which are the, the small bearing tooth idlers. I usually use big chonky smooth idlers, uh, bearing stack. I'm using this because this is what the kit came with and it's part of testing the kit. So that way I can give people feedback. But so far they've held up okay. Yeah, they're M4 and they're longer. Can you machine? I guess if you have the ability to machine proper, you know, if you can machine good threads, you, you, you can. I don't see why not. Like, I, I built my own V6 at one point. Um, yeah, well, not, not the thing, but there we go, uh, overhead. So see see this uh, heater block there? I machined that heater block. Like, that, that heater block I machined myself. It, if you got the ability to machine stuff and you, you got the tools that are capable of it, you, it's nothing to stop you. It's, it's an M4 thread and a nozzle. Ain't rocket appliances. Uh, do you any volumetric tests for hotends like Stefan does, or? Um, I don't because Stefan does. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions about flow rate, I just say, go watch Stefan's video. That's that's kind of my uh, way of doing things. Like, here's the thing. I don't normally push my hotends. I, most machines, you gotta understand, the vast majority of people are running V-wheel bed flingers. That's like probably the most common, V-Wheel Bed Flingers and Prusas are probably the most common types of printers out there. And I guarantee you it's like a good three quarters of printers are that. So those printers, you're not maxing out high flow hot ends. You're probably not even maxing out standard flow hot ends. So when it comes to flow tests, unless you're printing like, it's it's limited, it's limited how many people actually max out the flow rate of their hot end. It's very, unless you're printing fat nozzles on the, the slower printers. It's like the people that put repeatos and duets in a in a in a, in a creality under three. It's like, even then. Does anyone have a website with CNC Kitchen? He does it on his YouTube. So. This desk is shaking like mad. <laughs> So there's a maker fair in California tomorrow? Oh, that sucks. Can't go. But Voron fast, oh my God. Voron fast, Voron. It's Core XY, which is a fast motion system, but the printer itself is not meant to be a fast printer. Like it was designed to just be a normal Core XY printer. Um, Oh, the site. I, I don't know. Go to it. Go watch his video where he talks about it. And maybe there's a link in the description. You can't post links anyways in, in, in uh, chat anyways. So XG will hit 15 millimeters cubed on PLA through 0.4 and may exceed it with ABS. A lot of marking flow tests that Fetus does through one. Here's the thing here. He, okay. Here is the problem with a company specifying flow rate. It means nothing because there is no standard. There's no, to test flow rate, you need to use this extruder with this much force, with this much filament, through a nozzle of this size, at this temperature, in this environment. There, 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 there's no standard, okay? Um, Slice for their super duper mosquito, right? The big one. They were printing ABS at like almost 300 degrees, if I remember correctly, or 280 or something. They were overheating the filament so that they could extrude it that fast. There is no standard to flow rate, so do not take anything a manufacturer says with a grain of salt, unless they also state their method of testing 
and then that's only valid for their method of testing. So if you don't print ABS at 280, then you can't realistically get those numbers out of a super duper mosquito magnum, okay? So because there's no industry standards, I just view hot ends as normal flow, high flow, and that's it. This is a normal flow hot end. And then when I expect normal flow, I expect, you know, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, maybe up to 150 on the uh, infill, 200 on a good day. Like, I don't, I don't push it right to that edge because there's no standard because different filaments flow at different rates. Like ABS flows a lot better than PLA. Like different filaments have different mechanical properties. They flow at different amounts. Different nozzle sizes will impact flow rates. Different temperatures will impact different flow rates. Even humidity, there's so many variables. You can't just go, this is a 15 millimeter cubed per second nozzle or hot end. You, you, you just can't. So 15 millimeter cubed. I believe that this is, this is, I can believe numbers similar to a Revo. It's roughly the same size heater and heat zone as a Revo. Um, I don't know the wattage, um, but I, I, I expect Revo like flow pro and that's the profile I'm running right now. This is a Revo ish profile, or actually this is my only profile that I use for V2s or for Vorons. So it is capped at 18 millimeters cubed a second on ABS. Green PLA for right. Yeah, there's all kinds of different flow rates for PLA too. Different. There's all kinds of different. Remember, filament manufacturers do not make their filament. They take resin, which is manufactured by only a few companies, and they turn that into filament by adding colorants and whatnot and additives. So, depending on the base resin, you will get different properties. So, for example, ABS MG94 ABS is ABS resin that is specifically made for filament. It was Stratasys worked with, um, ah, what's the company that made it? Not NGO. It'll come to me. But Stratasys worked with a resin, a filament or a plastic resin manufacturer to develop a line of ABS specifically to turn into filament. Now, if you take ABS that's meant to be injection molded and just turn that into filament, like a lot of cheap China filament is, that stuff isn't going to work as good because it's not meant to be turned into filament. It's meant to be injection molded. There's all kinds of different, you know, it's like using different types of wood for different things. You have pine, you have oak, you got, there's all kinds of different types of trees and you use a specific tree for a specific use case. When it comes to plastic, that's the same case. There are different types of plastic for different use cases. That's why you see a lot of shitty cheap ABS smells really bad because it's made out of ABS resin that is not meant for filament. It's meant for like injection molding and usually of cheaper quality. So. Sabic, that's who it is. Yeah, MG94 is Sabic, which I do have some uh, somewhere. I don't know where I put it. Um, Cause it's the Replitech stuff. You can't like looking at it, you can't see the difference. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so this is MG94 ABS. And it's really good ABS. It flows like butter. But it's specifically designed for filament. Now, I'm not saying other manufacturers don't have good ABS. Polymaker has good ABS. But there's different types of ABS. Polyterra PLA doesn't really like the flow. It came out 10, 110 ish on the XP. Yeah, Polyterra I found, I can't print it too fast. I found ABS is the most unforgiving. Most, when it comes to printing ABS, I use the same profile for everything and it all just prints fine. Some of it prints a little better, but usually it all prints fine. PLA is like the only type of filament and I don't print a lot of PLA for a lot of reasons that I really have to sit there and adjust stuff on the fly to get good prints because I have so many different, I have a lot of cheap and a lot of good PLA, so. Have you tried the Bamboo Lab? I am not. I don't think I have any. They sent me some PCCF and uh, PLA, but I'm not going to go buy their ABS. I've, I've got plenty of ABS, so. We'll be doing the V02 upgrade on one of your machines. I will. It will be V00. Um, not only will it be getting a V02 upgrade, it'll be getting some mods like Kirigami bed and a belted Z drive. So it'll be, it'll be a modded V02. 
but the plastics. Um, there's not much to go. Like, injection... FDM has been around for, what, 20, 30 years at this point? Whenever Stratasys patented everything and locked it all down back in the 80s. So there's already been 40-something years of development. And I'm sure there is some way, but we are... When it comes to 3D printing, I heavily believe we are deep within the realms of diminishing returns. We are very deep within the realms of diminishing returns right now. Like, uh, where is it? Uh, shoot. There we go. Okay, in chat, does this look like a decently printed dragon? Does this look like a decently printed dragon? Looks good to me. Sure. It's all right. Yep. Looks good. Looks very good to me. Looks fine to me. Yep. Looks okay. Nine out of ten. Yep. So everyone's like, yeah, that looks fine. That is my Voron 1.4, which is a six-year-old printer design built with a kit using six-year-old parts. Running 8-bit Marlin with a E3D Chimera and a Bowden setup. That's basically a belted weight extruder with a Mark 8 gear. No, no bed mesh, nothing. Like, and a single 4020 for your part fan. So, six years ago. Yeah, that looks fine. We go a little bit faster now. We got, we got a lot more quality of life improvements. But at the end of the day, it's just a, it, we're printing plastic boats. Uh, it's still a plastic boat. Diminishing returns. Did 2022 slicing do like any of the slice with the 2016 slicer? Now listen here, we ain't going that far back. Does anyone have a 2016 version of Cura? Like I, I sh or was Prusa Slicer run? There, I could get a Simplify 3D profile, but I don't own Simplify 3D. So we basically, I basically took the original Voron profile and translated it into Super Slicer. So, or Prusa Slicer. I can't remember. Was it Prusa Slicer or Super Slicer? Uh, Voron, uh, Super Slicer. And gets you Slicer 0.97. Oof. Did he do a video on old prints? Like doing using old stuff? Makers did a video on. Oh, he did it on old slicers. Okay. Yeah, I know slicers have come a, w a long way, but I'm talking hardware. Like. Like for the video, I'm, I'm 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 sketching out the idea for the video right now. But it's basically, the motors in there are the same motors in the bamboo. The belts in there are the same belts in the bamboo. The lead screws in there are the same lead screws in the bamboo. We haven't changed the hardware at all. We've got slightly better brains running them, and you know, a bunch of quality of life improvements and better hot ends. But the actual motion systems. Are the same so when it comes to like speed and whatnot any printer can print fast everyone's like oh the bamboo is so much faster than the prusa xl the prusa xl has a nema 17 motor and gt2 belts the bamboo has a nema 17 motor and two gt belts the tool heads yeah there's a little bit weight difference sure a little bit belt run difference yeah but i bet you they can both move at exactly the same speed so Prusa is just very conservative with their profiles. But you can make a Prusa, Prusa 3 even move pretty quick if you want to, believe me. That version of Slicer wouldn't even have a Benchy. Adopted from CNC's. Yeah, you gotta remember, 3D printers, this, this is... When something, when Input Shaper came out and everyone was blown away, this is old tech to CNC. Like, um, what's what's the um, the fancy gen, um, full control? Okay, 
what is full every time i see full control it's doing like curve prints and whatnot three cnc machines have been doing motions like that for decades like ad adaptive tool pass where it moves around like it we're, we're so used to slicers and everything being on a 2d plane and just moving up and up and up but you know power mill um oh shoot i can't remember them all anymore because i don't work in the shop anymore i don't talk about them but like s proper cnc tool path generating that's been around forever it's just our slicers are so limited that we think ooh, it does a curve in the in the x y and z at the same time it's cool it's it's the same thing cnc has been doing forever it's just when that when one little bit comes down to the 3d printing we're all like oh my god yeah non-planner yeah that that stuff's been around for decades in cnc it's just we're so used to we're limited by laying down layers so in us it's like oh, x y up a bit x y up a bit instead of just whatever 5-axis 3D printers have already exist. I mean, what is stopping you from just taking a hot end and slapping it on a KUKA arm? Absolutely nothing. You just need the, the, the way to program it. That's it. It's like the, the 3D printed rocket ships. I love it. The 3D printed, it's got a 3D printer for rocket ship. It's a MIG gun strapped to a KUKA arm. That's all it is. And then software running it. 3D printed house. Let's just take a concrete, you know, boom. Put some concrete in it that, you know, dries pretty quick and doesn't slump. And just have a CNC control it. Same thing. All we're doing is taking stuff and slapping extruders to it. <laughs> All this is is a is a XY um what is it? Where, where, where you put the pen on it? Graph machine or stencil machine or whatever it's called with a moving bed. And all we did was slap an extruder on it. <laughs> but I will say. The uh, drop effect XG is uh, working pretty good. So no complaints there. It's chooching along pretty good. Plotter with a hot glue gun. Pretty much. It's a hot glue gun strapped through a motion system. Exactly. So yeah, I, I just love like, because I worked in a tool shop for seven years around big, big CNC machines. And like, you know, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I love 3D printers. But when like something from the big CNC machine finally trickles down into 3D printers, they're all like, woo. And it's like, well, it's about time. Here's how the nozzle change works. Uh, the nozzle change just like traditional. You just unscrew the nozzle, put a new nozzle in. Um, it's rich amount. So if you've changed the nozzle on a dragon or a mosquito, exact same process. You just unscrew the old nozzle, put a new nozzle in. Injection molding story time. I, don't, I wish I still had the one I built in shop class, but it weighed like almost 100 pounds and I threw it out. Uh, layer height, 0.2. 0.2 layer height. I don't know, what injection molding stories do you want? <laughs> Better because CNC World gets tested to hell and back and then makes the 3D pre... Well, it's not exactly proven tech. Like, Input Shaper took a while to get really good on 3D printers still. There, there, there was some rough, especially with the calibration at first. And now we're starting to see Bamboo where it does the automatic flow calibration. We're like, oh my god. If, you've, if you're familiar with CNC machines, like, CNC machines will automatically adjust speeds and feeds for load on the tool head. They'll, they'll just realize, oh, heavier load, you know, change speeds and feeds. They'll automatically do it. Oh, broke, a, broke a, a cutter. Well, swap it out to a different cutter. Keep going. Automatically. You have to hot tighten it? I didn't. I, I I assembled it cold, threw it in, and it's printing fine. So, Opinion on Tom's 0. 0.6 versus 0. 0.4. Um, I've, I, I watched that video when it first came out, although, albeit, I just woke up, so I was pretty tired when I watched it. Um probably makes a lot of sense like let's be honest the majority of people are printing stuff like this where you, you'll never notice the difference um the difference is when it comes to design for example all voron parts are designed with 0.4 nozzles and multiples of 0.4 walls for a certain dimensioning of items so that way you get continuous walls now with the new arachne engine and being adaptive and adjusting flow to adjust nozzle or the the thing you could do smaller details it's getting there but the problem is you're still using a bigger hole. You're just pushing less filament out of it. Is that as accurate as pushing the right amount of filament through the right size hole based on a tool path? 
hard to say. I know I've only tried to rack the engine a few times and I used it in Super Slicer and it's broken. And I didn't like it because it under extruded all hell and back. So yeah, but let's be honest. Most people could probably print with a 0.8 nozzle and they'll never realize. It depends on what you're printing. It depends a lot on what you're printing. A Benchy doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't, it depends on what you're printing. Try printing Voron parts with a 0.6. Every single part in here for the upcoming Salad Fork build, or the ongoing Salad Fork build, is printed with a 0.6 Revo Obsidian Nozzle in PCCF. So, this is all printed with a 0.6 Nozzle. With the classic engine, not Arachne. Because Arachne is broken on Super Slicer. So yeah, it might be fixed though, but... Now, you do save a bit of time, obviously. Um, in my opinion, like, 0.2 Nozzle don't ever use a 0.2 nozzle. There's really no point. If you want that big detail, go to resin. But personally, I would I would rock a 0.5. I find 0.4 is a little tricky with filled material. You get more jams. So a bigger nozzle is better with filled material because more fill you're less likely to get a jam. I I'm I would love a 0.4 or 0.5 obsidian would probably be the sweet spot in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. How's the hot end? It's melting plastic and making a cube. And then we're going to put some TPU in it. Do you print Sparta 3D Galaxy Avis using a point four? I do. I, I've never had an issue with it. Um, let's see here. No, not that. No, 3D. No. Uh, what, what am I looking at? 3D models. Yeah, three, sir, revised files, STL, standard, uh, try some frame. Rack. 30 of these. I gotta print 30 of these in TPU. I thought these printed flat. They do not. That's gonna be fun. Is it 30 per side? I can't remember. Anyone build a death racer yet? Is it 30 per side or? Uh, what flow multiplier do you use running Super Slicer for your different materials? Um, I usually run, let me pull it up here. So the profile I'm running right now is my generic profile I use for everything. Um, a second here. It's 30 per track, okay. And these are all gonna be blue. We're going with a black and blue thing. Should we be moving from, Gilbert, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You do what you think you need to do for what you are doing with your printers. Um, so let me see here. So on a 0.4 nozzle, this is my flow rate. Um, so default is 0.4. First layer, I under extrude a little bit so I don't get elephant foot. Uh, perimeters, I do 0.38 uh, for the external perimeter. Actually, normally I run 0.4. I don't know why that's 0.38. Uh, but I under extrude the outside perimeter a little bit, but the inner walls, I usually don't. Um, infill, I over extrude like mad. Like I max out my flow rate with infill. So with a 0.4 nozzle, I over extrude to 0.72. Um, that way you have to do less lines uh, to get X percent infill. Cause infill, you need to remember, infill is a percentage. So if you have 20% infill, that means over an X, Y distance, 20% of that infill will be material. So if you print with a larger extrusion width for infill, that means less lines for infill. So when you print high percentage infill, that means you get less lines, but each line is stronger and you save a lot of time instead of going do 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 done. And they're thicker lines that are stronger. Um saves a lot of time. And then top fill I under extrude so I don't uh over extrude on the top. Okay, so that's 30 of them. I don't know how fast you should print infill. I don't I don't print TPU. Some how fast do you print TPU usually, guys? I don't print a lot of TPU. Um do I have a TPU profile? I'll use the rat rig TPU profile. That'll work. Filament settings. Uh, 
slow extrusion multiplier. Oh, I leave it at 100. Yeah, because width and flow is your extrusion multiplier. Oh, yeah, OBS crashed. OBS crashed. I'm coming. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, we're back. We're back. Super Slicer crashed and then took out everything. That's always good. Uh, maybe it all crashed again. Did we crash? Did we crash? Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. Um, we're back. I'll slice that off stream. Actually, let me let me close Fusion 360 because it's been open since uh, a while. So maybe maybe that's using up all. Maybe it's got an overflow there. Um, but yeah, flow rate, I, I leave it at 100. I don't adjust flow rate because I nozzle width is the same as flow rate. So you, you set your nozzle width. You can either use a percentage or a diameter. So I use diameter, not nozzle width. So I could have put like 100%, 100%, 100%, 96% uh, for external walls and 120 or 175% for infill. But I don't, I don't mess with that. I leave my flow rate at 100%. And... The reason, it's like adjusting E-steps for flow rate. You don't adjust E-steps for flow rate. And you don't calibrate motion based off a printed object. It's because certain things, you can't guarantee their accuracy. There's too many variables involved. You see the slices? Yep, I already have uh, Cruiser Slicer 2.5 installed on my computer upstairs. Changing flow rates won't change the distance the tool moves for the next line. It reduces the number of lines. Uh, watch. Super Slicer. Okay, so let, let's do some science here. You ready? Okay, so for some reason we've gone back to V1.0. Let me load up my, my normal profile. Uh, oh my god, my computer's being all over the place. Okay. Uh, my god. I gotta fix this. I got I got profiles all over the place on these machines. Okay, whatever. So insert, add shape, we're adding a box. Okay, so this box is 25 by 25 by 25, 40% infill. Okay, so we're going to go to print settings, width and flow, infill. We're going to go 0.4%. So we're going to make it, we've got a 0.4 nozzle, we're slicing 0.4%. Okay, so let's scroll down a bit. Let's count how many lines we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten full lines across. Okay. Now, print settings, flow rate. We're going to go back to my 0.72 that I've been using. And we're going to slice down. One, two, three, four, five. Five lines. So, but we have the same material because it's over extruding that line. So, we do half the moves for the same amount of material for infill. And that saves you half the time when it comes to infill. But that's line width, flow rate. It will over extrude the filament to compensate for the flow rate. Extrusion multiplier. For slower print speeds, it over extrudes 99%. Does anybody know how to install a clipper on a smoothieware? Smoothieware? What year is it? I don't know. The, this is something Doc played with for quite a while when it came to maximizing his profiles and speeds and testing. And this is what he figured out and it's worked perfectly for him. And this is basically his profile that from a while ago. So.
What I think your profile does is it prints fast enough so it under extrudes. No, speeds stay the same. Speeds stay the same. Yeah, 60, 90, 120, yeah. Doc is on Andrew Ellis. Or get Doc's profiles. I don't know if he's ever posted them. I, I recommend now people use Ellis's profile. Um, Doc's profile is pretty much like tuned specifically for PIF. So. One of the speeds, usually I run 60, 90, 120. So 60 walls, 90, per, 90 for inner walls, 120 infill. But I, I bumped them up a bit. So this, this is like my normal speeds right here that I run pretty much all my machines at that have normal flow hot in. So 300 travels, 120 perimeters, 60 external perimeter, uh, 140 infill. And with that 140 infill at 0.72, um, let's take a looky-loo here, Gco preview, uh, feature type, volumetric flow rate. We are at 16.57 millimeters cubed per second on the infill because we are over extruding that infill. And watch here, if we drop that down to 0 0.8, or correction, 0.4, and slice now, see, now we're at nine. So the flow rate went up because we are over extruding on the infill. So now our infill is what, like 10, nine, nine millimeters cubed a second. So by bumping this up, we are pushing more filament out of the nozzle because the flow rate has gone up. See, so now we're pushing 16.5. And for a Revo, you might be over, you might be under extruding at this point. But if you're under extruding, you know, a 90% over extrusion rate, if you're extruding at 180% and you under extrude by 20%, you're still 60% over extruding, which is what you want with infill because you make stronger infill. So yeah. Ellis is on the Voron Discord, yeah. Yeah, it's, this saves a ton of time when you're doing, when you are doing a full plate of Voron parts, over extruding your infill so you do less individual infill moves, um, saves a ton of time. We're talking like an hour or two off, like you know, a half day, eighteen hour print, depending on what parts you're printing. All adds up. I mean, heck, putting your parts closer together on the bed saves time. Hello from Portugal. Hello. What are we at right now? We are at, it's 420 right now. Nice. Uh, oh, my wife get out of work early tonight. That'd be cool. Uh, ever played with higher infill SCV? It's a neat trick to get even faster. I have not. I, I run my, this right here, this speed, this is as fast as I run my printers. I don't really go crazy on speeds and feeds usually. One, because I don't really run high flow. Um, the only printer I have that has a dedicated high flow nozzle installed in it or hot end is Tallboy with the Rapido. And I haven't even turned Tallboy on once this year, so. You're just printing thicker lines with more material. That is over extruding. You're pushing more filament through the nozzle. Well, either way, terminology then. I want to push more filament through when I'm doing infill, so I have to do less travel moves. Overflowing, I guess you could say, um, but I'm over extruding. I'm pushing more filament through than normal. I view that as a term called over extrusion. I mean, like we call, you know, bed flingers Cartesian printers. That's not the right way to call them, but that's what we call them. So, uh, what do you think of using MGN 9 plus 15 finishing extrusion instead of the usual 2020? I know the drawbacks. Um, you won't be able to fit the uh, drag chain. The drag chain will be wider than the extrusion. Um, I don't chase grams. I have no input when it comes to chasing grams to, to lighten the load on your printer. I mean, I'm running full-size LGXs with dual MGN9s and a full stealth burner um, on V226 back here. And it's been that way for two years and I haven't had a single issue with it. And it runs these speeds all day, so. I disagree that is over extrusion. So overflow. We're we're overflowing the nozzle then or over over pushing. Um, 
Using the flow multiplier will draw the same amount of lines, making the extrusion width wider will push more plastic and draw lines. Exactly! Chasing Graham says it make more sense to have a slightly stronger motor. I prefer reliability. I, I don't run um, stealth chop on any of my machines. Um, I run beefy motors on my machines. I, I run profiles that don't push it to the limit because I prefer, you know, when I hit start on a print and walk out for eight hours and the prints, the bed's not even warm yet when I leave the house, when I come home in eight hours, I want that print being done. How many prints? Um, I printed, I tried a few prints and I, it, everything was under extruded, so I just stopped. But that was with Super Slicer. Uh, recommend how do you connect uh, chamber LEDs to stealth burner LEDs to an octopus? Because there's just one RGB port. Um, I For your chamber LEDs, I usually just plug them into, um, I, I can't remember if I use a fan header or just a spare um, um, heater. So, some, some of the different stock profiles to test, you don't calibrate line width then. Every printer is a bit different. No, I don't calibrate. Um, so, when it comes to my E-steps, I extrude 100 millimeters of filament, and I measure exactly what 100 millimeters of filament is. And then that's my E-steps. Everything after that is flow rate, I adjust. I adjust my extrusion width, and that's it. Because when the extruder pushes 100 millimeters of filament in air, that is a science number. That is the number. You don't mess with that number. And then after that, you adjust extrusion width or flow rate. And usually I leave flow rate at like 100% and then just adjust extrusion width. Because certain things like infill, if you're out of bed, it doesn't matter. But when it comes to like fitting, you know, holes, like screw holes that are size for size, that's why I under extrude my one external layer so that stuff fits a little bit better. So usually I just walk it in. So I print something, I make sure everything fits. If I need to adjust, I'll adjust my wall width until it's good, and then I call it a day. Remember, I, I use the same profile, the exact same profile, exact same like printer settings on one, two, three, four, five, uh, basically every Voron I own except for the switch wire. I run the exact same profile. They all have different extruders. They run different nozzles, different hot ends. Every single one prints perfectly functional Voron parts with zero issues. The only one I might be a little worried about right now is because the 0.6 was PCCF on um, the LDO V2 that we just did. But so far everything goes together just fine. So yeah, I don't, I don't individually calibrate my printers. I find a profile that works good enough with everything and I stick with it. And I don't know, this is printing pretty good. <laughs> you need to take, get those profiles uploaded for us to look at and play with. They're, they're butchered. They're like, I, I've tweaked stuff over the years. It's, I don't like sharing this profile. Like I, if you want, you know, I've shown it on screen a bunch, but yeah, slices are getting to the point where you need to take a full-time course to learn them. That's why you find a profile that works and you just stick with it. <laughs> like I, I run, I have how many Vorons? Each one's running different versions of Clipper, um, different sizes, um, different extruders, different nozzles, different motors, different everything. Like not, no two builds are the same, but I have a profile that prints perfectly good parts on every single one of them. I'm fine with that. I keep it in the wrong button. Probably less printing this winter as the energy prices are here. No, Lars, Lars, you're doing it wrong. What you do is you print more, but that offsets the, the, the increased heat generation from the printers while it increases your electricity costs. It lowers your heating costs, so they cancel each other out.
CW2 has issues with TPU. Make sure to calibrate the limit screw. Hmm. I haven't played with CW2 yet. Because I don't have issues with CW1 on any of my machines. And a bunch of my machines are running commercial extruders. That don't have any issues. Um, yeah, 300, 300 infill with 95A TPU is a little cuckoo, in my opinion. Like people have, earlier, people are like, I'll oh, print 30 to 50 with TPU. And then what I hear is printing at like crazy. Okay, so let's, uh, so what do we got here? We got Trident. Okay. Uh, let's print with the rat rig TPU settings because why not? Um, These speeds seem pretty slow, so that's good. Uh, small perimeter, first layer speed. Uh, there we go, 30. Print's done. Okay, so let's take a look here and see what we got. So. Do, do, do. Oh, actually, that focus is pretty good. Focus! There's our top. There's our front. Direct overhead lighting is evil. There's our one side. So you can see there's a uh, where speed changes because they the width changes you get these little artifacts same like on the benchy there's that side and that side and there's your bottom so again this is a profile that's tuned for abs with a max fan with filament i've never used before on a hot end i've never used before Yep. Uh, over extrusion hot air with super slicer. Just decrease your line width or your flow rate on top layer. Uh, where are my bearings? Where are my bearings? Six two five. And there we go. And let's see. Got our test guy. No, no, no. That one goes in here. Ooh, that's the first time this has been stiff. Oh, there we go. That one goes in good. Ooh, that's the first time the bottom one has never gone in. Normally he's going right good. Oh well, top one went in fine. Not too shabby. All right, some content we'll test. We'll discuss this over Print Buster. Have fun! Yeah, th these are just stuff we figured out over like Years of tuning profiles on Vorons for speed with multiple different slicers and hardware and extrusion width and flow rate are the same. Extrusion width is it know your slicer knows what size nozzle it has and your printer knows how many steps per millimeter to push X amount of filament. So if you tell your slicer, I want to extrude 0.72 millimeters of filament for infill, it converts that in the, when it spits out the G code, it, you know, you need to push this much filament. It calculates it all and it pushes out. This is how many steps we need to move to move this much filament through a 0.4 nozzle to make this much extrusion width. Science. Speaking of, let's print some uh, TPU. I like TPU. Actually, I don't know. I've never used this TP before. Hopefully it's dry. I don't know. Do I gotta dry it? Hopefully I don't gotta. STL's standard uh, pro dry, drive in frame, drive A, track V2. 30 of them. So let, let's just do 10 for now. 10. Uh, 
So we'll, we'll try 10 and hopefully I don't break anything because I haven't printed TPU on this machine before. Um, so let's let's take a looky loo here. Um, I'm going to print this at 25% infill. We are going to print this at how many layers? Uh, we want I want four walls because these are TPU and these are my tank treads. Five top, five bottom. Ah, I hate when it auto slices. Don't auto slice. I don't want my tank treads getting destroyed. Those seem a bit close. Why not? What's wrong with them being close? And should I print with a brim? You know, I'll print with a brim just to be safe. Ain't gonna hurt. Have I tried sequential? Um, I've done it before. I don't really find a need for it though, usually. There we go, that'll work. But yeah, um, with it being too close, what's wrong with them being close? What, what happens if they're too close? Keep you okay, then turn off brim. What happens if they are too close to each other? Sequential is good for face mode. Yeah, the only time I've done it is I had to print stuff for the uh, rep rack. Okay, take out this filament. Ooh. Oh no, I gotta use my that filament. So let me swap this filament out for this filament. Actually, I can just use the middle one that's not being used for anything. There we go. Uh, so what time is it? We are at 4.35. So if you haven't had your chance to enter for the filament from Polymaker that we give away, enter right now. Do this now. Doesn't have much stringing problems, yeah. So the reason you print stuff closer together, you save on travel moves, you save time. Where's my mic? There it is. Ooh, that was a good one. Are these resealable too? Cool. I have vacuum bags. Oh, this will be a nice blue. Oh, that'll be a nice blue for it. I don't, do I have a, hopefully the PLA blue that they gave me is the same. Do I have PLA blue? I do, but I think it's different shade. pushing rope here. Yeah, I need to move this. This is not in a good spot for these. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa! This spool, is this tangled? Or am I just being... Oh, this is tangled. Oh, fresh out of the box, the spool's tangled. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? Okay, get rid of that tangle. What the heck? Almost there. There we go. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so that's locked in. Okay, so export G-code, save. Upload and print. Try and track. Let's see how this does. Um, I do have something on the bed. I've already got some thing for an interface layer. So we should be okay, I'm hoping. We'll see. It's not translucent TPU, it's just blue. Do you glue up your bed? I do have an interface layer, so. A favorite model to print with TPU. This is probably, I'll be honest, maybe the fifth time I printed with TPU. I don't print with TPU often. I print it, every time I print it with TPU has been for a review video. Seriously, every time I print it with TPU has been for a review video. And I print like one or two things just to make sure the printer can print TPU and that's it. I don't print a lot of TPU. So yeah, this cube's fine. Like, we got a little bit of artifacting where it does speed changes, but I find PLA, it's more noticeable because of the temperatures. Um, so when you're doing like a long perimeter and then all of a sudden you have like something that stops you and you have to go and turn around, it usually leaves a defect when you're printing fast, I've noticed. But it flows really good. Bridge is really good. Top's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. It's a cube, it printed good. Not bad for a brand new nozzle. And, 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 look at that. Not an ounce of residue on it. Nice and shiny. You can see the uh, the line. <laughs> that was the top layer. No. Well, you can slightly feel the lines, but so I need some light. There you go. It's a top layer. <laughs> Speaking of settings for your flow and speed and cooling on bridges, uh, let me pull it up here. Actually, no, I can't pull it up because I don't have that slicer. Uh, super slicer. Pull up a different instance of super slicer. Uh, okay. So, so speeds and feeds. Here is speeds and feeds. Um, this the thing is my profile here is based for ABS. Um, so bridge settings are 100 and 140 for our internal bridges. Okay, over extruded. Well, it's okay. I could always just drop the extrusion multiplier and wouldn't be over extruded, but with ABS, it's fine. I'm like, these are all just slicer settings. You just adjust the number if you're having an issue. And then, depends on what you're looking to get out of your printer. Where in this case, we're just staring at it very intently while it heats up. Or in this case, cools down. Because we're starting at 30 and the bed's 48, 42. So this is the problem when you have, you know, a 5 16 inch slab of aluminum. Thirty top speed. What? Uh, print speed. Print settings. Screen. First layer of thirty. What are you looking at? Where's thirty top speed? There's first layer is thirty. I always print slow on my first layer. Filament settings. Uh, oh, this isn't what. What are we looking? Speed. What are we looking at, zombie? These are different profiles. This is my random, this is the random profile. This is the V2 profile.
Might be an override. Yeah, there's some overrides. Yeah, like volumetric speed, I'm capped out at 18 millimeters cubed a second. Oh, for the cube. Oh, the cube. Um. Yeah, these speeds. Uh, speed to beads. Ba ba ba. Yeah, 80 with a 25 millimeter second first layer. Yeah, so these are what I'm using for this. And then I'll just adjust my percentage if it's too fast or too slow. Filament tab. Uh, I think I got the wrong thing. Uh, no. There we go. TPU. There you go. There's TPU. Oh, mod. Ooh. It's not probably going to take too long. I know, I just pulled up the TPU profile for Rat Rig. <laughs> that is slow. For PLA. That wasn't the profile I used, I think. Uh, let me pull it up here. For what the cube we just printed, um, this is it right here. This is what I used for the cube we just printed. Uh, was, one second here. I don't know. Yeah, this is what I used for the cube we just printed. Material not print setting. I don't even remember which one we had. Oh, extrusion multiplier. Oh yeah, that's for the filament, yeah. Well, PLA has a different extrusion multiplier. I don't even know which one this is. This isn't, I normally don't print PLA with this computer. My computer upstairs is what I use for PLA prints usually. This machine is mostly like project stuff. So these profiles aren't the most up to date or accurate for not stuff. See, not 100%. Zombie, that's the first time I've ever even looked at that number. So that's whatever Doc set up a year and a half, two years ago. So. How does the switch work fair? It's fine. TPU temp 220. The problem is the bed is too hot, so we're waiting for it to cool. <laughs> so that's how you tune line width. Well, I guess that would be like an overall baseline. But that's... Let me see here. Let me check. So, Toasty PLA. What am I using for my normal ABS? Because I don't even have... Do I have my normal ABS even in here? I think that I just have 0.92 across the board for like everything. Cause it's all, I all, I, this is all based on one profile I set up. Yeah. All my filaments are 0.92 across the board. Oh, ABS is uh, 0.1, 1, 1.04. Or no, it's one. It's one. Uh, one profile. That one's 0.92. Yeah. All my profiles say 0.92. <laughs> so I might be under extruding. Yeah, whatever. Pushing molten plastic out of a glorified hot glue gun. Good enough. Higher EM. Hex EM. Oh, extrusion multiplier. Uh, the rat rig profile has it at 0.89. I'm sure it'll be fine. Point nine two is for ABS. This PLA profile is based on the ABS profile. All I did was drop the temps and up the fan. So that's why the PLA profile is point nine two. Because back in back in the day, we all calibrated our flow based on like in Cura from line width or whatever it was. And flow rate in Cura back in the day was like point nine two to point nine four or five, depending for ABS. Um, and then you just put a number of lines and whatnot. And now with Super Slicer, it's all converted over and whatnot. So. I don't know. I don't view 3D printing as chasing perfection. I've Good enough. Good enough. Problem is, we're waiting on a 10 millimeters thick slab of aluminum to cool down right now. And uh, it's taking its time.
What Gico flavor is used for Clipper? Clipper. Oh, and Super Slicer. Yeah, um, Super Slicer, you can select, I, I think, I don't know. Super Slicer, we just select Clipper. Um, I just picked Marlin, probably. I don't think it really matters. Blow on it. Ninety-five point four. I don't think we'll get the print started before we uh, before we run out of time. You got ten minutes to give away your, or to win some filament. By the way, yeah, that explains it. Point nine two is for ABS. The PLA profile. I just up the speeds or up the temp or up the fan and drop the uh, the temps. So that's why the PLA is point nine two. No high flow version. It makes, if you are bringing a new hot end to market, it makes zero sense if you're only putting out one hot end to make a high flow version because majority of the market is not high flow. Turn on parkling. Um, I'd have to restart. Um, emergency stop. Put that right in the middle. One more restart. This is clipper because it's waiting for the bed to heat up. It's all paused, so I can't. Send a new thing to say fan max. There we go. So next up is compressed air cooling. I don't want to run an air compressor in this room. Fetus went high flow with the Rapido and it's been yeah they already have this is drop effect, which is part of Fetus now or I I don't know how the whole thing works together, but if you want a Fetus high flow get a Rapido. Got super cheap white ABS that basically cooks the plated nozzle and everything sticks to it. I don't like white ABS, the titanium in it to get the, the white makes it weak too. How many high flow ions have troubles printing at normal speeds? The problem is you have a bigger melt zone, so you have less control. Remember the problem with the the problem with 3D printing in FDM is we are using filament to control flow rate. So you are taking something that turns to mush when you heat it up and pushing a ball of mush to control your flow rate. So if you got a longer melt zone and you're pushing filament out using like filament, it's liquid. There's all kinds of fluid dynamics going in there and it's different with every type of filament and different resins. So when you have a smaller melt zone and you have hard filament pushing that blob to push filament out and control your flow rate, it's going to be more accurate than when you have a bigger blob. Okay. Because fill, you know, it's, it's liquid, it compresses and it, it does all kinds of fun stuff and you get that semi melting line of filament. So longer melt zone at lower speeds, you get a bigger melt zone because you're not pushing as fast and the filament sits there longer. It There's all kinds of math behind it because that's something we had an issue with with the injection molding machines is the longer the, the filament sits in the barrel or the resin sits in the barrel, it also degrades. Now, I don't think fil resin filament isn't sitting in the nozzle long enough here to degrade, um, but that was a huge issue in injection molding. If you like stop the machine for like an hour, You'd have to shoot a bunch of parts and throw them right in the garbage because that filament was garbage. Or the resin was garbage. It's been sitting in the barrel for so long at temperature or close to temperature. Fetus bot drop effect. Okay, there you go. What speeds do I use in Switchwire? Uh, Prusa speeds. My Switchwire profile is basically a Prusa Mark III profile with the speeds bumped up a little bit. Highish end, you'd recommend flow rate? Probably the same as a Revo, 15 to maybe 16, 17, 18 millimeters cubed a second with a really good filament like MG94 ABS. Do you tune each steps with a filament outside the hot end? If I can. But I always measure above the extruder. When it comes down to it, when you tell your extruder to move 100 millimeters of filament, it should move 100 millimeters of filament. Whatever comes out of the nozzle doesn't matter. It's what the extruder is pushing. And then you adjust what comes out of the nozzle using flow rate and extrusion width. Screwed into the frame, so you probably commissioned me to print a lot of parts in the future, though. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, rails should be in, like, dovetailed or properly machined slots. But, yeah. Are you keeping this hot on the printer? Yep. I'm going to keep it on. I'm going to print a bunch of stuff. I might do a keyboard. I kind of want to do a keyboard build, maybe. I'll print on there. How heavy is the XG? I didn't weigh it. Um, I would probably say lighter than it's 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 mosquito magnum or mosquito weight ish. 
It's a lot of copper and titanium. So it there are no hot ends I would be that I would consider heavy. If if your if your hot end is too heavy, hit the gym. <laughs> okay, where are we at? Where are we at? 36.9. Yeah, we're not going to have time to start this print, which means I'm not going to start the print um, before a while. Um, seem really versatile. With the, I really like the mounting options. I do like all the options. This, this hot end will probably be a very good option for those that have commercial printers because of all the different options you have for mounting it. Or if you're designing a printer and you want to get funky with the mounting options, like it, it obviously it works fine in a, a stealth burner. Um, what a pellet extruder hot end. Unless you're doing a massive printer or industrial scale, it makes zero sense on any machine that you would normally use in your house to have a pellet extruder. How do you do a retraction on a pellet extruder? Uh, you can make the tool head super rigid if you use all the holes. I don't know. I don't think it's... We got four screws in from the top here and it's plenty rigid. But you could probably mount it pretty much directly to, like, you can mount an orbiter directly on top of it with the adapter, and then you could mount the, uh, like, if you had an ender, you could just drill some holes in the plate and mount it directly to the plate and then slap an orbiter on top and call it a day. So. Got a design down, but I've yet to release. Okay, bad idea. I had to take it apart later. <laughs> uh, I used acetone to glue my afterburner together to stiffen it after I was 100% sure it was reliable. Jason, I would never do that. <laughs> acetone welding your hot end to get, like, I run stealth burners and Voron tool heads, every variation on multiple machines, I've never had a need to acetone weld it together for rigidity. In fact, if you grab it and move it, your carriage is probably moving before anything else. That is massively overkill. I, I, I welded a titanium bathtub frame in my Civic just after I made sure um, it would drive me to work. Also, what forces are you putting on your on your extruder on your hot end that require at, at to be that rigid? There's no cutting force. Your your extruder is moving in air. The only time it hits anything is if you crash, which if you crash, you probably ruin the print. <laughs> Any interest in building one of those belted feet extruders? One guy on YouTube did it. Are you talking about the um, proper printing one? It looks cool. It's massive and heavy, and it wouldn't fit on any of my, well, I'd have to put it on like a bed flinger because it wouldn't work on any of my Vorons. Um, and here's the thing, like this is why I, I think it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not cool, okay? But where, where did I put it? Where did I put you? Where did I put you? I keep moving stuff and misplacing stuff. Are you in here? This is why you don't clean everything and move everything around, because then you misplace everything. Are you in here? No, you're not in there. Where did I put you? I don't know where I put my LGX light. Ah, here we go. So, it's really cool. I am not saying it's not cool, but this works just fine. And it's much smaller, much lighter, much more compact. Ugh. So, yes, it's really cool. I'm not saying it is not cool. I am not saying that. But outside of a theory crafted designing for the sake of designing, and I, I'm sure it's probably really good with flexibles. Something like that would probably be amazing for flexibles. 
How did the printing with Pico? Oh, uh, the front of the tool head fell off because we cooked it. Uh, there's a Portuguese guy developing a belted exterior round name of 14. It's less than 140 grams with oh the step or with the stepper. Front fell off. Yes, the front fell off. Also, I'm a bit worried about long term. Um, like if you're using printed parts and whatnot, how are those going to hold up in a warm environment for hundreds and thousands of hours? Because I know like hit pr the proper printing one is out of resin. The first one he made was out of resin. I don't know if he's got a, an FDM one now, but resin fails in Vorons horribly. Nobody's ever built a Voron resin with Voron parts that are part of the actual mechanics. So like, yeah, the Voron... Uh, stealth burner front face on V226 back here is resin, but th this orange part here has no force on it. But I've seen people print like XY joints, idlers, motor mounts out of resin. They fail constantly, all the time. I've never seen somebody build a functional Voron with the functional mechanical parts out of resin that have survived. So a, and it's because of the heat. The heat in the, once they get warm, they, they, they just crack and they explode. So an extruder in a warm environment out of resin. That's why he's running them on enders and open air printers. So it, it doesn't matter for that, but. There's a few iterations. I'm excited to see where it goes, but I think it's something it, it, it's like the, what's the other one people always asking me about the um, positron cool design. It's interesting extremely niche extremely niche and there's a lot of downsides to that design like your filament doing a 90 degree bend it while it's molten tougher resins are working um tally wart i have seen multiple people do voron resin printers like voron printers built out of resin every type of resin you can imagine i've never seen it work Engineering resins, ABS-like resins, it, it always fails. I've never seen anyone do it successfully for a long term. Might work for a bit, but I've seen like carriages get ripped apart, like literally explode chunks out of it. So. Always built the cheapest printers possible. Now after 10 years, I finally got my original LGX Lite and Rapido and don't regret the money I spent. There you go. Once you realize chasing the bottom barrel of cheap printers um, is not a good way to do things um, because when you go cheap, you sacrifice and then you get frustrated and then you get out of the hobby. Um, you realize it's actually good to spend a little bit of money, especially on your first printer to have a better experience and actually enjoy the hobby because nothing is better than buying your fresh brand new Ender 3 that you bought for $99 at a... Uh, it's in Circuit City or I don't know, whatever the place in the States, you can always buy them cheap. And uh, you go home and uh, your bed is, you know, a Tony Hawk Pro Skater level. And your extruder just grinds filament and you got a bunch of loose screws in it. But hey, it was 99 bucks and that's what, you know, the guy on the internet said you should buy for your first printer. And then you spend forever trying to get it to work and you never get it to work because, you know, you, you accidentally short it, short it out because you installed uh, a BL Touch that somebody told you you had to buy and you wired it up wrong by accident. And, uh... Is short it now. You got to buy a new controller board, and you, you know I could have just bought a Prusa Mini and been happily printing, but no, nope, you got the internet told you to buy the cheapest printer and learn by fixing it, because once you you know unclog a nozzle once, you clog it a million times. Hey, right. so every stream we give away filament. If you haven't entered, uh, it's a little late. I closed it, but you'll have another chance tomorrow night on the stream where we build. I got a okay. V1.0 is back there. Where the hell am I going to put the Trident now? Shit. Anyways, tomorrow we're building a salad fork. Or continuing to build with the salad fork. So, every stream we're going away some filament from Polymaker. Um, this is a cool hot end. It's going to be about $95. So somebody give me a number between 5 and 9. 5 and 9. 5 and 9. Dr. Ronnie and Jeffrey, you guys jumped the gun way too much. Or did you? Maybe you did. I don't know. Six. We'll go with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Spin the wheel. If you win, you'll get an email from me after the stream ends. Uh, you just got to fill out a little form. And get yourself some filament. A couple days to a couple weeks, depending on where you live in the world. 
Blah blah user. Congratulations, blah blah user. You blah blah won some filament. Let me get your contact information here. Didn't mean to go to that screen. Control F. There we go. I got your information. You're the only one. Good. So yeah, congratulations. So there we go. Now, when it comes to first printers, I I know a lot of people say buy a cheap printer and learn by fixing it. Um, I started with a modern rice mini and the mini barely did anything other than swap out a fan shroud and went right to building Voron. So that modern price mini, which the moment I built my Voron started collecting dust, I didn't learn anything from. Start with a printer that works so you can have fun with 3D printing and learn how to actually run a proper printer and then get a project. Because the amount of people that I've talked to over the years that get frustrated with 3D printing and dump the hobby because they started with a cheap printer that was nothing but issues and then they accidentally broke something and then that's it, they're done, um, is quite high. Not everyone, not everyone, not every use case. Everyone's different. But that's why I say start with a good printer. Okay. Is it really $100 to convert? I don't know. You'd have to ask. Uh, it, probably more than that. You gotta buy rails and whatnot. But um, uh, Steve did one. Okay, I'm continually fixing my neighbor's Ender 3. There you go, Ben. Okay, first for the Mendel Max. <laughs> Buy a Prusa Mini. Okay, a real Prusa Mini. Okay, so we're going to end it there. I want to give a shout out to uh, Drop Effect for sending me this uh, hot end. Again, they no money change. Words and opinions are my own. I'm allowed to say whatever I want. Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Um, but yeah, it seems like a nice little hot end. Um, installation went fine. Um, we had to do a little bit of crimping because, you know, we had to. But if you were installing this in something like an Ender, it's probably dropped right in. The wires are probably long enough. You wouldn't need to do anything. Um, PID tune and off to the races. It printed PLA fine. We only did one test print, unfortunately, but we will do, I will do some uh, TPU printing tonight. Um, doesn't have a hardened nozzle and they are proprietary. That's pretty much the only thing I can really critique it on. Um, unlike the Revo, you can replace the thermistor for this and their current, or I don't know if they will have it on release, but you'll be able to get a PT100 and a PT1000 option. Um, it's not high temp, limited to 300 Celsius, and it's not high flow for those chasing speed benchies. Um, but for most users, it seems to be a pretty well-built package. I love the mounting options. All the mounting options on the, uh, the, 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 the frame that around the heatsink are pretty cool. The kinematic mount, I don't know if that really does much other than, you know, help with cooling and, you know, making it a very quick, you know, preventing heat from coming up into the heat sink. Um, or if that's just simply a thing to get around the slice patent on having a rigid heater block um, with a, in a whatever, whatever the slice patent is. I think this is how they get around that is what it is. Um, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the specifics, but I don't know. It works. So, yeah. So I will see you guys tomorrow. We will continue on the salad fork build. Uh, we'll give away another spool of filament from Polymaker, which we give away a spool every stream. And shout out to Polymaker for the filament that we printed today and the filament all over my floor that I got to find a home for. Um, is screwable and in... yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's a, you can screw it in and screw it out. Um, so yeah, that was fun. We got it working. I'm gonna have to figure out where to put the Trident now, or maybe I'll just put the V1 on top of the Trident. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, I gotta go pick up the little guy from daycare now. So, uh, for those that donated to the stream, became members of the channel, um, or gifted memberships to others, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. So, shout out to you folks. You're awesome. Uh, everyone else, I hope you enjoyed the stream today. Shout out to Polymaker. Shout out to Drop Effect. I'll see you tomorrow. It's Friday. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Enjoy your weekend. Cheers. <laughs>